what a legacy that we have. Through this foundation, Benjamin William Mkapa managed to reach directly 12 million Tanzanians in provision of health in, across the country in collaboration with the government. President Mkapa sponsored 736 students in various disciplines of medicine since he started the foundation. And they're all working, and some of them you'll see them today here. Some of them have been assimilated into the government and they rose to the rank of regional medical officers. We thank President Mkapa for that. President Mkapa helped to renovate, build, uplift at least 536 health facilities across the country. This is mainland and Zanzibar once he left the office through his foundation. And some of them we created and provided modern laboratory and theater equipment. We are grateful for what he has done. President Mkapa recruited, thank you very much, he recruited at least, at least 5,336 health workers who are still currently working in various parts of Tanzania and Zanzibar. His interests are in three areas. One is sustainable health system, financing, collaborative and innovative idea. Second, HIV AIDS fight. He was very keen in fighting HIV AIDS, particularly amongst adolescents and mother to child transmission prevention. And to that, the world recognized him as the champion who actually managed to lobby and push down the prices of antitrovial, as well as HIV drugs, and Tanzania was the first country in Africa to start administering antiviral drugs to pregnant women and those who are infected with HIV. This is a remarkable uh, achievement. President Mkapa also ensured that civil societies who are dealing with health are nurtured, provided guidance, and ensure that money is put on the best use. So Benjamin Mkapa Foundation is a chair of non-state actors on health in Tanzania, providing guidance, sustainability, and leadership. But also, thank you very much, also Benjamin Mkapa Foundation is a secretariat of all civil, uh, service, uh, civil um, foundation which deals with uh, health matters. I will go on and on mentioning, but today, we are going to hear more from the panel discussion, from different presentations which are going to be made. And for those who are following us online, some of them could get time to say a word or so to us across the globe. Without taking much time, let me invite Dr. Ellen Mkondia Senkoro, the CEO of Benjamin Mkapa Foundation. Dr. Senkoro is the first CEO of the foundation ever since it has been started, and President Mkapa trusted her, and she has delivered immensely, and she's here today with us. She's a medical doctor by professional, a public health specialist. She has worked with development partners. She has worked with the civil society, as well as government, and she will give us her opening remark, the journey of bringing up to underserved, Dr. Sankoro. Your Excellency, Dr. Hussein Ali Mwingi, the President of Zanzibar. Your Excellency, former Presidents of United Republic of Tanzania and former Presidents of Zanzibar. Your Excellencies, former Heads of States and Governments and friends of late former Benjamin William Kappa, first Vice President and second Vice President of Revolutionary Government of Zanzibar, Mama Anna Mkapa, the widow of late President Benjamin William Kappa, honorable ministers from the Union Government and Revolutionary Government of Zanzibar, members of diplomatic corps, our esteemed partners and donors, 
Chair and Trustees of the Benjamin William Kappa Board of Trustees, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. May I use this opportunity to salute you all in our very famous salute. Kwa jina la Jamhuri wa Mungano wa Tanzania. Asante. I'm standing before you to thank you for joining us to this commemoration and the symposium in honor of the life and legacy of our beloved His Excellency Benjamin William Kappa, the former president of the United Republic of Tanzania and the settler and founder of the Benjamin Kappa Foundation. I thank you all for coming and sharing with us your precious time. We feel honored to get a slot of your remarkably busy schedule, and it means a lot to us. Thank you, Your Excellency President, Dr. Hussein Ali Mwinyi of Zanzibar, for accepting our invitation to this commemoration. Even though you are former and first chair of the Board of Trustees, we could not take for granted that you will find time to be with us. We are truly honored and touched by the gesture of belonging you have shown us. To all of you who have accepted to join us physically and virtually, we say thank you countless times. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is one year since our beloved and one of our own, His Excellency Benjamin William Kappa, left us. It was so sudden and got all of us so unprepared. We never saw it coming since he looked to many of us very composed and in sound health. He seemed to have more life ahead and we wished it could be so. From our foundation, we had expected to have more of him and we looked forward to celebrating with him our 15th anniversary of the foundation that took place on 14th of April this year. He could not make it. That was a day of darkness and sorrow to us. We wept and grieved. Africa lost one of the best sons. The nation lost their leader who loved them so much. The family lost their cherished father and their pillar of strength. And we, the Mkapa Foundation, were robbed of our settler and compass. It was difficult indeed. We thank all of you who came to comfort us and gave us strength to soldier on. However, weeping was not all we could do. We also had to reflect and recollect the valuable time and experience he shared with us. We realized how privileged were we to journey with him in his last mile. From him we have learned, we have grown, and we have built this formidable foundation. They gave us a precious opportunity to serve and impact lives of many. We could not ask him for better we could not ask him for more. He actually owes us much more. Through this foundation, 20 million people have been impacted directly and indirectly in the last 15 years. <laughs> Through interventions we have made and contributed to in the areas of strengthening health systems, through effective planning, recruitment, and retention of human resources for health, deployment and development of more than 530 health infrastructures, community health system strengthening, provision of technical assistance on country resource mobilization, and improvement of health policy and guidelines. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is for this very reason that we thought it befitting to build upon and sustain his legacy. The decision was made to commemorate this day every year starting from today. We chose the inaugural theme for this year to be President Benjamin Mkapa, a year after celebrating his life, living his legacy. We have brought together people who have known and worked with President Mkapa to share their journey with him. We will be having a testimonial and an expert panel on health for all. And last but not least, we will witness the launching of our Benjamin Mkapa Endowment Fund. We have tried our level best to live up to his spirit of perfection and excellence in organizing this event. But as you all know, it is always a mammoth task to fit into the shoes of late Benjamin William Kappa. Therefore, kindly bear with us in case of any shortcomings. We value your feedback and we promise to do much better in the years to come. 
Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, great men may die, but their great ideas do not. Their legacy lives after them. This is so true about late President Benjamin William Kappa, and it is the very reason why we are meeting here today to honor and celebrate his life, for his is the life well lived and time well spent. In his own words, in the last part of his book, My Life, My Purpose, a Tanzanian president remembers, he said, I will leave it to my God and you to decide what difference I've made in this world. We, the Benjamin William Kappa Foundation, have decided to tell this story. Welcome and kindly stay with us and enjoy watching the following documentary that shows our journey to this far. Asante ni sana kwa kunisikiliza. Cruising into the state house as Cruising into the state house as the third president of the United Republic of Tanzania since independence, the latest excellency Benjamin William Kappa left behind conspicuous landmarks still lingering in the memories of every Tanzanian. However, with all the achievements that marked Mkapa's leadership glory, many still wonder as to why he lined up health for a foundation. I remember um, being the deputy minister for health uh, during his time in office, uh, that he had a keen interest when it comes to health issues. To start with, uh, President Mkapa was very keen on the fight of HIV AIDS. And the reason is during that time, the, the pandemic was such that it had a huge effect, not only on the health of the people, but also on their economic uh, status. And for that matter, he had uh, put in place um, a lot of programs to make sure that we fight uh, HIV AIDS uh, pandemic during uh, those times. So we had achieved a very good success in the fight against HIV AIDS. But uh, later on, he realized that uh, the most important thing was to, to work to make sure that the health systems uh, are functioning rather than fighting uh, one particular disease. And this is the reason why we see today uh, our health systems are quite strong. One of the phenomenal milestones achieved during this time was the establishment of the National Health Insurance Fund. The fight against HIV resulted in reduction of its prevalence in the country from a record high 8.1% in 1995 to 6.5% in 2004. During the late Mkapa's era, there was a substantial increase in the number of medical doctors graduating annually from below 60 in the late 1990s to over 190 in 2005. All these collective efforts led to downfall of maternal deaths from 854 per 100,000 live births in the year 2000 to 721 deaths per 100,000 live births in 2005. All these achievements didn't mark end of the road for the late Mkapa as there was a strong quest to deploy more efforts in fighting persistent health sector challenges. As a consequence, he established a foundation barely six months after his state house exit. He had a unique passion and vision for a foundation that was 100% Tanzanian, managed by Tanzanians, to bring about homegrown solutions in the health sector. He had um, confidence in the people uh, that could run his foundation. And he also had confidence in the uh, capacity of Tanzanians when it comes to uh, health uh, provision. And uh, for that reason, when he started the foundation, uh, I remember being the first chairman of, of, the, of the foundation. Uh, we had everybody on board who was a Tanzanian not only in the board, but also the management. So, uh, and it, it has proven that uh, he had the right vision and we have done very well. And I'm, I'm happy to say that I'm, I'm proud of this foundation. 15 years later, the Mkapa Foundation, BMF, has grown into an institution playing a vital role in supporting government's efforts in building a better health sector for the nation. Through various projects such as service delivery, health system strengthening and emergency response, the foundation has reached 26 regions of Tanzania, bringing hope to the underserved communities. For 15 years of our existence, we have reached and impacted the lives of approximately 20 million people in Tanzania, thus supporting the government in tackling the HRH crisis, 
which is registered at a 50% shortage of the required health workforce across the country. Halimashauri yetu ya msoma imefaidika kwa kiasi kikubwa na huduma zinazo tolewa na taasisi hii ya BMF kwa mfano katika kituo chetu cha afya cha Murangi tumekuwa tukipokea madaktari wanaofadhiliwa na taasisi hii ya BMF ambao madaktari hawa wametusaidia sana kuboresha huduma za upasuaji kwa mama wajawazito ambapo wamesaidia sana kupunguza vifo vya mama na mtoto na rufaa kwenda hospitali ya mkoa BMF has proudly executed the solutions in very close collaboration with the government that is the Ministry of Health and President's Office, Regional Administration and Local Government. And it has resulted in the deployment of about 9,000 health workers in overall, which is a pool of a mixed facility and community-based health workers that have worked and continue working in hospitals, primary health care facilities, port of entries, and even in training institutions. <laughs> Nipea majukumu ya kumudumia mama na mtoto na wagonjwa wanao lazwa katika maodi hapa kituoni. Wakati nafika kituoni, kwa mama wajazito walikuwa wengi walikuwa natuwa rufaa kuenda mkuwani kwa jili ya kufanyua huduma za garua. Lakini tangu nimefika, nimekua nikiwafanyia wagonjwa wajazito ote, huduma zote za upasuaji wa garua na ote ni matatizo mengine yote ya nausi ya nana uzazi. Zamani, tulikuwa tunapata shida ya kupata huduma tulikuwa tunaenda msoma kwa sasa tunapata huduma kwa hapa mlangi na hapa nilipo na watoto wawili wote nimejifungulia kituo cha mlangi na kwa sasa hivi kituo cha mlangi kinatoa huduma nzuri na mpaka ya operation tunaipata labda itokee emergency kubwa tunaweza kufika msoma our rapid response to emerging outbreaks which happened in 2020 such as covid-19 is commendable the Mkapa Foundation was one of the first local entities that responded promptly to collaborate with the government, development partners, and civil society organizations. By ensuring risk communication, community education was given priority in highly affected regions and targeted audiences. Kufitia taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa kwenye uduma ya afya, wametupatia elimu na vifa ya kwenda kutolea huduma ya afya kwa jamii. Tunahamasisha jamii hususan uzazi salama, TB na HIV na masuala ya lishe. Kwa wilaya yetu kuna jumla ya wahudumu 125 na kila mhudumu mmoja kwa mwezi anahudumia kaya 48. Wahudumu 125 tunahudumia kaya 6000 ndani ya wilaya Mpurani. I have personally seen the work of the foundation when working under the Ministry of Health in the past five years and currently under my new portfolio, President Office, Regional Administration and Local Government, Benjamin Mkapa Foundation has been complementing the government priority greatly. For example, they have played a crucial role in supporting the government in the reproductive maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health especially to ensure women and children have access to quality medical care services in rural areas by investing into human resource for health, including community health workers. Our promise is to continue honoring the legacy of the late President Mkapa, who was well known as an ardent and visionary leader, a reformist, a diplomat, and a person who believed in self-sustainability for development. It is from these values of His Excellency Mkapa that tempted us to the foundation to establish an endowment fund which will ensure perpetuity of the organization in terms of long-term sustainability of its function of reaching the mission and the objectives our drive towards self-reliance and institutional development.
Your Excellency, we are now coming to another part of the program, and this is a panel discussion on the sub-theme of uh, creating sustainable and resilient uh, health system. And this panel discussion will have um, four panelists, but uh, it will be led by Dr. Faustina Ndugulile, who is a Minister of Communication and Information Technology and a member of Parliament. Faustina Ndugulile is also a member of Parliament for Kigamboni. I will want to welcome him to take a center stage. He is a vast chairperson of a Parliamentary Standing Committee on Social Science and Community Development and chairman of Parliamentary Committee on HIV AIDS. He's a medical doctor by professional, and before joining politics in 2010, Dr. Ndugulile worked as assistant director of diagnostic services at the Ministry of Health in Tanzania. He's a member of uh, several uh, societies. One of them is uh, American Society of Microbiologists, ASM. He's a member of Tanzania Public Health Association, TPHA, and Secretary General and later Chairman of Tanzania Parliamentary Aids Coalition, TAPC. Dr. Ndungulile will lead the panel discussion, but also will invite discussion from the audience before returning the session to the moderator. Dr. Faustini, the stage is all yours. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Moderator. Uh, His Excellency, uh, Dr. Hussein Mwini, President, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I'll start by inviting the panelists to come and join me on the floor. And the first speaker, will be Sanjay Rugan. Sanjay Rugan started, you all joined the Standard Charter Bank in 1999. He has served in different capacities inside and outside Africa. He has been the first CEO of Tanzania Standard Chartered Bank and the first Tanzania since 2016. He has been uh, recognized with driving significant business transformation in his role as a CEO. He has won many accolades for his position and through the strong leadership representation with the different important thoughts leadership forums. Uh, Sanjay Rugan, who is also a good friend of mine, is the chairman of the Professional Accountants in Business Committee of the International Federation of Accountants. Is the current chairperson of the CEO Roundtable, deputy chairman of Tanzania Bankers Association, executive member of Tanzania National Business Council, and the director of Association of, of Tanzanian Employees. Please join hands to welcome Sanjay Rugan. Okay. Our second speaker is His Excellency Donald John Wright. Donald John Wright is an American physician, government official, and a diplomat serving as the United States Ambassador to Tanzania since 2020. As a medical doctor and a career member of the senior executive services, Dr. Wright has served in acting in a permanent position in the US federal government, including the Secretary for Health and Human Services, which is the Minister of Minister for Health in the US, Assistant Secretary for Health, Deputy, Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary for Health, Deputy Assistant Secretary for Healthcare Quality, and Deputy Assistant Secretary for Health, Disease Prevention and Health Promotion. Over his course of his career, Dr. Wright has been the forefront of efforts to improve public and population health in the US, including disease prevention, health promotion, healthcare delivery, healthcare quality, occupational health, emergency preparedness, healthy aging, and the elimination of health disparity. He has also played a leading, a leading role in efforts to enhance community and hospital emergency preparedness for natural disaster, act of terrorism, and the pandemic influenza. 
please uh, join, please welcome uh, Honorable Your Excellency, the Ambassador of the United States of America to Tanzania. Our third panelist is Dr. Fatma Mrisho. Dr. Fatma Mrisho is a world-renowned public health specialist in reproductive and sexual health. She has served as Executive Director of Tanzania Commission for AIDS for about nine years. And after, before, this was after being the UNFPA country representative to Uganda. She has also served as the UNFPA Regional Reproductive Health Advisor for English-speaking countries based in Ethiopia. She has also served in the Ministry of Health uh, Tanzania as the Director of Preventive Services, Faculty of uh, of Medicine under the Department of Community Health at the Mwimbili School of Medicine. She's also, she's a Makarere graduate and she has a postgraduate diploma in public health and a master's in human nutrition from London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine in UK. Please welcome Dr. Fatma Mrisho. Our last panelist is Dr. Lauren Ndumbaro is currently the permanent secretary in the president's office, public service, for the last six years. He's a, he's a guru in this particular area. He was a political advisor to former president Jakaya Mrito Shokikwete for over eight years. He has also been a, a senior lecturer at the University of Dar es Salaam for over eight years, but he has also served as an administrative officer in different capacity in Songea, and the Tanzania Coffee Board. He has published many papers on governance, human resources, uh, parliament, and democracy. Please welcome Dr. Lorian Indumbaro. <laughs> to set the ball rolling, I will start with the lady, the, the only lady in, in our panelists, Dr. Fatma Mrisho. And the discussion is about universal health coverage. As we all know, for all those that don't know, universal health coverage is about access to health services to the people when and where they need it without suffering financial burden. Universal health coverage has four key pillars, one of which is health promotion, health prevention, curative, rehabilitation and uh, palliative care. Universal health coverage is not a new thing. Uh, we have uh, the primary health care from the Almata days, 1978, but it was solidified in 2018 after the Astana declarations. Dr. Fatima Mrisho, what do you see as the major gains in universal health coverage in Tanzania? What are the challenges that you see and what do you think needs to be, to, to be done? You're most welcome. Your mic, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, as you've indicated, uh, universal health care is not something new. And it has been ongoing, I would say, post-independence. And uh, the gains are... I would, I would stick myself to, limit myself to reproductive health, which was my, my agenda. Some of the gains that have been seen would be discussed later by the person who's going to talk about child health. But I would say that is where we've made the biggest gains in health. Um, the other gain that we have made is reduction of a number of diseases, particularly diseases that are preventable, immunizable. The other gains that we have made is increase in health, health workers. I remember once speaking about a population policy chaired by Malim Nyerere, and at the end of my discussion, he commented that, oh, uh, when we were asking for independence, we were 
asked, why do you want independence when you all only have four doctors? And look at, look at the, look at a person like her and she represents many, many more. And even then you could see the growth, incremental growth in the number of uh, human resources for health. Although I would later go and say that is also a constraint right now. And I'm so happy to meet um, Mr. Ndumbaro because I hope I will, I will have time to discuss some issues with him in private. Uh, the village health worker started very early, and that was, I think, the first indication of Tanzania's uh, seriousness in universal health coverage. So, thank you. So, we, yeah, we've made a lot of progress. Um, currently, as, as I speak, we have IT in health, which is a major, major um, game changer, I would say. We also have a lot of um, several, several um, high-level consultants and technicians who can manage pretty much every disease that you can think of in Tanzania. Up, so that is from the higher level, but also from the level right down to the village, where we, we started with village health workers, and we now have community health workers, as Ellen uh, aptly um, talked about. So we also have a number of uh, infrastructure and, and still growing. Initially, we were supposed to have a dispensary per a population of 5,000. Currently, we have some dispensaries within patient facilities, but also almost all health centers having surgical facilities, and, uh, and the number grows. We also have um, existing infrastructure schemes of various types, some trials by non-governmental organizations, but a number of them, as indicated uh, in Ellen's uh, discussion, National Health Insurance and the Improved Community Health Fund. So, Dr. Richard, thank you very much. You've highlighted some of the major gains on the human de uh, resource development, uh, vaccine preventable diseases, uh, infrastructure, and all that. Uh, I know you're an expert in reproductive and sexual uh, health, and uh, you've worked uh, in that area for a number of years. Despite all these major gains in, in the health sector, we still have some challenges. When you look at the maternal and infant mortality rates, these are still very high. Teen pregnancy is around 27%. If you look at uh, uh, young people, and this, uh, they are actually most disadvantaged. Look at the HIV statistics. Uh, currently, uh, among new infections, 40% are among the uh, young people, and within that 40% is the girls. So what are the key unmet needs and related barriers, and what do we need to do in order to address the situation? In two minutes. In two minutes? Yes. Okay. I would start with inadequate human resources for health across the board, but especially for midwives and pharmaceutical assistants. And I would like to underscore midwives, midwives, and midwives particularly in relation to reproductive health. Um, resource availability, we have a wonderful health sector strategic plan, number five, and it is costed. It's the expectation that it would be fully funded. If it is not, uh, we will not be able to meet the targets. Um, we need to finalize 
the National Health Insurance Fund and uh, improved community health fund bill and submitted tabled it to the parliament. Uh, we need to raise awareness and popularize health insurance as a strategy uh, nationwide. Uh, we need to raise awareness on the plight of maternal health, infant health, which also includes um, uh, the first 28 days of life, which is a reflection of the health of the mother, by the way. And um, we also need to address the issue of cultures that mitigate against health and welfare of children, adolescents, women, and few men. Um, uh, My two minutes are Yes, Dr. Fatma Mrisha, I think we'll end here. Uh, I'll come back to you. Uh, my second speaker is uh, Dr. Lorian Ndumbaro. As I, as I had introduced him, he's the Permanent Secretary, President's <laughs> Office, responsible for public service. Uh, universal health coverage requires competent and motivated health workers at the community level who are equitably uh, distributed and adequately uh, supported. We know as a government we have made a lot of investment in the health sector and we've, uh, in the recent years we have invested a lot in, in terms of building infrastructures. And uh, with, with this uh, achievement it has come with, with its own challenges. Currently uh, the human resource gap stands in the health sector stands around 52%. So, what solutions do we need to come up to, actually, to make sure that we bridge this gap? And then particularly in this area, we have invested in, in training human resources for health. Some of them are employed. Some are still in the streets. How do we work on this huge population of health workers who are not employed, but we need them in the health services? You're most welcome, Dr. Dumbaro. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. The government has been working hard, I think, from independence, as, as you all know, we had not even enough personnel. So the, in the first like 30 years of independence, we used to expand training for health sector, you know, professions and others. And also the, the profession are changing now and then. So we, we have also been upgrading the, the professions now and then, so that under current situation now, we have more, 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 more health professions who are not employed. And so the government is uh, employing three major strategies in dealing with this. The first one is the usual one that um, continue to employ year after year. And uh, in, in this financial year, actually, the government has allocated more than 11,000 vacancies for health workers that will be employed in this year. But uh, the second strategy is to work with non-state actors like the Mkapa Foundation. You have heard that the Mkapa Foundation for the last 15 years has recruited or has deployed more than 9,000 9, health workers who are working in government uh, has facilities in remote areas. So we, the government is creating an enable, enabling environment for um, non-state actors to complement government eff efforts in various, in various areas. And the third strategy that we are working on is to try and develop a volunteer program working framework that will allow us to absorb those who are not employed as volunteers to work in the different government facilities. And uh, our focus will be mainly borrowing from the Mkapa Foundation, you know, the spirit of Mkapa Foundation, to deploy them in the remote areas where, you know, the only facilities that you can find there are government facilities. And if you don't have workers, then, you know, it becomes a crisis. So we'll 
develop the volunteer program framework that will enable us deploy volunteers to those areas. Those are the three major strategies that we are going to, to use. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ndumbaro. Uh, as we are discussing about universal health coverage, uh, we are all aware that uh, the, the, the part of disease is changing. In the recent, uh, early years, we are focusing on uh, communicable diseases, but uh, of late, we are seeing a new pattern of non-communicable diseases, which are very different, by the way. With communicable diseases, you get sick once, you get treatment, you treated, you never, you never go back to the health system. With the non-communicable diseases, once you get sick, you are permanently fixed in the health system for, for, your, for the rest of your life. So you are seeing this uh, changing burden of, of disease in Tanzania with non-communicable disease on the rise, but also the advent of uh, COVID-19, which brings views a, a strong case to invest in communities, health promotion, and health prevention programs. What do you see the role of community health workers in this setup? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I agree with you that the community health workers, you know, employing them is a good idea, but we should also go back to our rich history of uh, dealing with this type of things. Uh, I remember in the 1970s and 80s, when we had communicable diseases problem, we used to, to have sustained health campaigns, you know, across the country. Mtuniafia, Chakula Niwuhai, you know, these campaigns, you know, were sustained, you know, leaders from the national leaders, the region, district, even the world level, were all singing the same, the same song, campaigning for Mtuniafia, Chakula Niwuhai, and this, you know, was a cost-effective type of thing, a campaign that, you know, raised the consciousness, consciousness of the people about these com communicable diseases. We can use the same experience in uh, dealing with non-communicable diseases that we can, you know, start a national campaign, you know, uh, at all levels, all leaders, you know, from national, district, region, if all of them will talk about this, you know, people will understand and then we'll address those issues. I also remember, you know, our, our, our history. When we were in primary school, we had a subject called Hope Economics. And under that, or Marifa Nyumbani, that's, in that subject, we had been taught about how to handle these communicable diseases, diarrhea, chorea, students were taught in primary schools. And so if we also mainstream health education in the primary, primary school, secondary school, this will be a long-term sustainable solution you know, in addressing this, this problem. But we can also employ, the, the, as you said, the, the community health workers, but in areas where, you know, you have significant outbreak of these things. And this will be, I think, a more cost-effective thing if we employ health, community health workers in those areas where, you know, you know, you know, you know there are the extreme cases, areas of extreme cases. But we can also, as I said, embody it or mainstream in the primary school, secondary school, health education, and then people will be more aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Lauren Dumbaro, for those uh, wonderful remarks, and I'm going to give you uh, time to wrap up uh, at a later stage. My third speaker is uh, Mr. Sanjay Rugan. Thank you. Who is representing the private sector. And uh, as you know, the private sector is an important partner in the journey towards uh, universal health coverage. How do you see the private sector complementing the government's efforts towards uh, universal health coverage? Uh, thank you, Mashmir Aziri. And I think we very significantly contribute. But I think it's just to take a moment on what private sector means. So I think as a nation and across Africa, 80% of whatever is produced in our countries comes from private sector. 75% of the total credit that is taken in most of our countries is taken by private sector. 65% of the total investment in any country is done by private sector. And 90% of the people employed in the formal sector are employed by the private sector. So that's the strength and the machinery that the government or any nation has. And I can tell you that in every country where there's been progress in the health system, it's really because there's been significant collaboration. 
I must also say that, you know, when you talk about universal health coverage, universal health coverage started in 1978, if I remember, 43 years ago. When we started universal health coverage then, the role of the private sector was just a little bit of production, a lot of procurement, and a little bit of distribution. Now, statistics shows that anywhere between in a year, from 25% to 40% of the contribution in the health sector could be from the private sector. We've scaled up significantly. We are now involved in knowledge, in education. Mishmira talked about campaigns, services, products, goods, manufacturing, value chain impact. We are using technology as an enabler. A lot of work is happening on logistics. Like I said, 80, 90% of the total distribution happens through private sector. We've also really expanded on our partnerships. You know, in olden days, and Mishima Bolo, Bolozi will talk about it, that in the past, you know, the donor agencies could just fund us. But now we, try, we are creating economic sustainable models, and that requires private sector. So we have had partnerships with various development partners, with UNICEF, with AMREF, uh, and that's a big thing we've done. I also want to say that the private sector is what finances a lot of the interventions that we do. Now, just citing a couple of very quick best practices. I mean, Tanzania has made so much progress, including through Kappa Foundation. I mean, we boast of some of the best hospitals now. So, you know, you know if I talk about Aga Khan Hospital, it is amongst the nine uh, accredited hospitals in Africa. And we don't even know about this. They do a lot of work on cancer, on gender equality, CCBRT, you know, for, from a disability, eye care, gender perspective, do phenomenal stuff. And this is all private sector interventions. The financial services industry, Standard Chartered Bank, where I come from, we've spent $7 million in the last five years just on eye care. Uh, I see NBC, my friend sitting there, CRDB, uh, uh, NMB, everybody is putting in a lot of effort. We need to just coordinate these efforts. You, you look at mining companies. You look at Dalberg that is doing a lot of research work. And then finally, MNOs, you know, I think are very critical uh, as we evolve. And, you know, data is going to continue to be very critical in, in, in essence. And finally, I would say that, you know, when you talk about private sector, uh, whilst we have done a lot to manage the burden so far, the burden of health, and I know that COVID has taught us, is very, very huge. Just in terms of statistics, if you look at Africa, 11% of the world's population is in Africa. 24% of the total global disease burden is in Africa. We only have 3% of our global of our workforce that is involved in health, so we have a lot much more to do. And only 1% of the global investment goes in Africa health. So there's so much more to do. Thank you. Thank you for, for that intervention. Uh, and uh, if I don't ask you uh, this, uh, I'm not going to sleep tonight because uh, I'm the <laughs> minister responsible for communication, but also the digital transformation in, in, in this country. Uh, you have highlighted some of, of, of the issues here and the engagement of the private sector. How do you see the role of uh, digital transformation and the technology in uh, filling the gaps uh, that you see in the health sector from the private sector perspective? Waziri is talking about his house now, ICT. I think ICT can give us exponential transformation you know, whether it is in health or many things. But if you just talk about health, you know, you talked about communicable diseases, non-communicable diseases, or pandemic now, you know, because it's a big thing. So whether it is in the adaptive technology, you know, what is adaptive technology is, we are a very resource-constrained country. And a lot of the equipments that we need, need to be made for resource-constrained con countries. And these are technology interventions. So whether you use GE, or many other organizations, Philips, you know, they can be of huge uh, support. But let's talk about data, because that's where you come in. And I must congratulate you, because your ministry started only in November last year, and you've already started to involve us in making the blueprint, which is very important. So here is the magic. If we collected all the healthcare data from the providers, if we collected all the MNO data on the population, the concentration, and, uh, you know, the social behaviors. If we collected all the data from financial services, the utilization, from all the food chains and how we consume food, from the bottling companies, from insurance providers, human resources, as we talked about, 
Imagine the data we have to make good decisions. So decision making becomes better. Sorry, we, we can we'll, manage we'll workforce take, we'll, better. We'll take a pause as our Excellency is about to step in, then I'll pass on uh, the mic to doctor. When she step in, I'll ask you all rise uh, as uh, Her Excellency President Samia step in any seconds from now. And Superintendent Mpepo, you'll be ready for the national anthem and East Africa and as we start. May we all raise, please.
Your Excellency, Madam Samia Sulu Hassan, President of United Republic of Tanzania, we take great honor and thank you for your time this morning, Your Excellency, for attending to this uh, global event that has collaboratively been organized between the Benjamin M. Kappa Foundation and your government of Tanzania. Thank you very much for setting aside your time for this. Your Excellency, in this venue, physically, there are about 600 participants, but also, Your Excellency, this event is followed globally, and there are some few head of states who are following up this event. I'll mention a few who have uh, participated or are continuing to participate. The former president of Mozambique, President Chisano, is following up this event. The former president of uh, Nigeria, President Obasanjo, is following up this event. Right Honorable Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister of United Kingdom, is following up this event. Representative of former Prime Minister of Finland, Matia Tisari, are following up this event. And if time permits, uh, President Bill Clinton did promise he will follow this event. Your Excellency, we have national leaders current and past with us here from both Tanzania and Zanzibar. We have the spouses of national leaders, religious leaders, members from security organs, diplomatic corps and missions presented in Tanzania, academic institutions. We have the family of the late um, President Mkapa with us today. We also have private sector leaders, civil societies, as well as uh, politicians from various uh, groups. Your Excellency, a point to note, your, thank you very much, a point to note, Your Excellency, of particular importance, and this group of requests to stand we do have Mkapa Fellows. These are medical staff who were recruited by President Mkapa when he started this foundation in order to serve the marginalized and underserved communities. We do have 256 of them, but here we have about 10 of them representing others. And I'll request them to stand. You recognize Mkapa Fellows. If you, thank you very much. Your Excellency, President Benjamin Mkapa also had recruited over 5,336 health workers. And these health workers have been deployed in rural areas, in some areas, in order to complement your government effort in provision of health. Some of them have been assimilated into the government system as time went on, as district uh, medical officers. And some have climbed the ladder up to regional medical officers. We have 26 of them present with us. I will ask them to stand as well. They are right there. Your Excellency, we also have member of the media. All local medias are presented, but we have two international media with us, BBC and KTN, who are covering this event. Your Excellency, we are now into the panel discussion, creating a resilient uh, and sustainable health system. This panel, Your Excellency, is led by Dr. Faustina Ndugulile, Member of Parliament for Gamboni, but also by professional and medical doctor. We are just in the middle of it, and I will let them, Your Excellency, to continue. Then I will invite the CEO of Benjamin Mkapa to formally invite you, Your Excellency, if you permit. Dr. Ndugulile, if you can please continue and finish the discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Chief Moderator, uh, Madam President, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Now I will let uh, Mr. Sanjay Rugani to complete one minute of his intervention and I asked him uh, what role can technology play in order to bridge the gaps in uh, health systems. One minute. Good, and thank you, Vaziri. And we are talking about technology in terms of adaptive technology and data, and I think we had covered adaptive if we were talking about uh, data. 
And I said that data for development is very critical. It gives you exponential opportunity for scalability. And we talked about healthcare data, MNO data, financial services data, food industry data, bottling company data, insurance company data, and human resource data. And I said with your ministry and the fact that we are doing a blueprint, it was really going to help us in decision making, workforce management, health commodities, you know, which means supplies and, and production, and also investments. And I think finally, it creates, it also helps us for, for partnership management, because you know in which areas we need to focus. So I think I would end at that for now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sanjay. And uh, our last panelist uh, for today is His Excellency Dr. Donald J. Wright, the U.S. Ambassador to Tanzania. Uh, Dr. Wright, Tanzania has made huge strides in the health sector in partnership with, with the development partners. What are the initiatives or strategies that uh, DPG and the USG have been implementing to support the journey to self-reliance and universal health coverage? And what do you see as the successes? And what opportunities do you see that you need to be capitalized on? Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the question. Well, as it relates to self-reliance, let me assure you that the United States is committed to promoting self-reliance in our partner countries around the world. Uh, in Tanzania, this is a per particularly appropriate because the country was founded under the principles by the late father of your country, Julius Nereri. And that commitment to self-reliance has been championed by successors, including the late Benjamin Makapa. Uh, the United States has a long-standing bilateral relationship with the people and government of Tanzania and this year, we're celebrating 60 years of working together, Pomoja 60. As it relates to the development partners, let me say that over the last 20 years, Tanzania's Health Basket Fund has proven to be an excellent mechanism for strengthening Tanzania's health system and delivering results for the poor and vulnerable. This project brings together resource, resources from multiple international development partners into government health systems to work on uh, achieving agreed upon goals. While the United States does not contribute directly to the health basket, we have seen the effectiveness and support joint goals through the uh, provisions of technical assistance. Uh, as it relates to UHC, let me say that the efforts of the development partners to support universal health coverage aims at supporting the government to increase access to health services when and where they are needed, without financial hardship, and without compromising quality. Tanzania is not there yet, but de development partners have supported the government of Tanzania to develop systems, policies, and strategies to enact universal health coverage through a senior single health insurance policy. As it relates to the successes, uh, let me say uh, I would first like to take a moment to uh, recognize the efforts by the government of Tanzania in reaching lower middle income status ahead of schedule. This demonstrates great potential to reach new development milestones, and we are committed to supporting Tanzania to achieve these. In our mutual goal of Tanzanian self-reliance, uh, we must focus on sustaining and improving in, uh, these economic gains and translating them into real increases in household incomes and the ability of each individual citizen, particularly in the rural areas of this country, to access quality health care. We development partners are committed to strengthening collaboration among ourselves and ensuring that our development support is well coordinated as we engage with our government counterparts. There are certainly opportunities to improve our partnership with the government of Tanzania and ministries and departments, and hope they will commit to the same level of, uh, of coordination. Thank you very much, Ambassador Wright. And now, um, to wrap up our discussions, I'll start from far, far left. Sanjay, I'm going to give you one minute. The president is here. The president of Zanzibar is here. One minute takeaway message. What do you want the president and the congregation to hear? One minute. Okay, uh, 43 years since we started universal health coverage. Our commitment is by 2030, we are going to hit massive milestones. How are we going to do that? 
My message to the government, and since the president is here, is the partnerships we have seen in the last 43 years are wanting. We need to have real partnerships so that we achieve our targets in the next seven years. My contribution to the private sector, the CEOs who I work with, is that including COVID-19 has taught us that investment in health drives economic prosperity, and economic prosperity drives business. Thank you. You want to see more partnership and engagement of the private sector? Absolutely. Ambassador Wright, one minute. Uh, what uh, prioritize action, leadership, and the stakeholders need to undertake going ah. forward? Thank you. Well, let me begin by quoting one of our former presidents of the United States, George W. Bush, who founded the PETFAR program and launched global investments in fighting HIV and malaria. He once said, Africa's most valuable resource is not its oil, is not its diamonds, it's the talent and creativity of its people. Madam President, I urge you to continue investing in the people of Tanzania, particularly the youth. One of the most critical needs faced by Tanzania today is human resources for health care. In some remote areas of the country, 70% 70, 70 of health care positions are vacant. And overall in Tanzania, the vacancy rate is about 52%. While, we, <clears throat> while we've seen important strides made in increase, increasing public sector hiring, critical shortages exist, which are particularly problematic for reaching goals around reducing maternal mortality. Midwives and doctors are needed to provide essential maternity care. More progress must be made quickly to expand all cadres of the health system to enable the nation to be resilient in the face of COVID-19. Thank you very much, Ambassador Wright. Uh, you mentioned that we need to invest in the people and also build the capacity in the human resource uh, for health. Dr. Fatma Mrisho, you've been very passionate about reproductive and sexual health. Uh, now is the right time for you also your message to be heard. What is your one minute take home message? The first one is um, fully finance the fifth health sector strategic plan. I keep on repeating this because the fifth health sector strategic plan is for strengthening the health system. The second one is in, I keep on repeating, invest in human resources for health, particularly the ones that are missing most and key to reproductive health, since that's, that's my topic. Midwives and pharmaceutical health assistance. Very key. The third one is make maternal and child health issues a national priority. In collaboration with non-state actors, particularly non-governmental organizations who are very capable, increasingly showing capacity in this country, as well as the private for-profit sector. Thank you, uh, Dr. Fatma Mrishu, for that very powerful closing remarks. And I'll end with uh, Dr. Lauren Dumbaro. One, one minute take home message. Thank you very much. I think the first one is uh, we should uh, use the experience of 1970s and 80s in uh, raising awareness of people against non-communicable diseases. And the second one is that as we work on the uh, volunteer program framework, I think we continue to work, we'll need engagement of various stakeholders so that the government in long-term perspective may approve that, uh, that framework and you can start using volunteers in, uh, in these remote areas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ndumbaro, for those uh, remarks. Uh, you are mentioning that we should uh, revisit. This is not a new experience, although the burden of disease has changed, but uh, the be best practice from the past that we can revisit. But also, I'm happy to hear that uh, you're talking about the volunteer program framework, whereby we can engage the unemployed health workers to, to provide service while we are building the capacity and uh, uh, 
use them when you employ them because at, they'll be providing service, but also they'll be getting the, the substantial experience uh, while they volunteer in the health system. Now, uh, I've wrapped up with the, with the panelists. Now I would like to welcome contributions uh, from the floor. Okay. Um, yes, I've seen some hands. And I'll start with uh, Dr. Khalid, the Minister of, of State, Vice President's Office, Revolutionary Government of Zanzibar. Could you pass on the mic to Dr. Ali? Dr. Halid Mohammed is the Minister for State. Thank you. Dr. Halid, you have yep. three minutes. Thank you, Mr. Three minutes. Yes. Yes, sir. Moderator, for giving me this opportunity uh, to give my commands <clears throat> to the panelists. Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, first let me commend the Benjamin Mkapa Foundation for organizing this important event. I also commend the moderator and the panelists for the very insightful and enlightening discussion. My humble comments are centered on the need to have a multi-sectoral approach and effective coordination mechanism in health-related issues. As we all know, the health sector has numerous sectors, as already said, but having different roles, objectives, and approaches in supporting and in the provision of healthcare services. These sectors include the government, donor agencies, private sector, NGOs, CSOs, and others. <coughs> But within the government itself, we have different institutions having different roles, and all those can contribute positively to achieve positive health incomes. We have, for example, Ministry of Agriculture. It has got a role of making sure that we have adequate, nutritious food for good health. Ministry of Water for making sure that what we drink is clean and safe responsibilities for the Ministry of Communication and, in, uh, and Infrastructures to ensure that connectivity that allow people to have an easy access to health facilities. And all these calls for intersectoral linkages and coordination. But also looking at the Ministry of, the Ministry of Health itself there is also a need to have internal intra-coordination. If you look at the aspects, three important aspects, the health structure, we have the primary health care units, we have the district, we have the region, and we have the referral hospitals. All this needs to be interconnected and to have effective coordination within the organization itself. But even personnel, we have practitioners, and we have specialists and other supporting staff. They also need to be connected, and therefore there is a need for intra-coordination within the organization itself. Services that are offered, we have different services that are offered in the health sector, diagnostic services, for example, epidemiology services, drugs and treatment, logistic, and all these call for effective coordination of department sections to make sure that they all work in a more coordinated manner and not working in silos. <laughs> My personal view is that health issue being multi-sectoral in nature, it needs multi-sectoral approach and effective coordination both sectorally and centrally. For the central coordination to be effective, I think we have to define 
an overarching objective and a common goal in the health sector. Once we define that, stakeholders' roles and activities need to be streamlined to make sure that we achieve the defined goal. Th thank you very much, Mr. Khalid, thank for, you that, very much. for that uh, very informative uh, contribution. I saw Shalene Bahuguma, presented for UNICEF. Please, uh, you can now have your floor. You have uh, three minutes, Shalene. Asante ni sana. Uh, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols uh, observed. Uh, it's a privilege to be able to speak today uh, at this uh, prestigious event. Uh, truly, President Makapa's vision was exemplary because he put human resources and human capital first, understanding the need to invest in children, in education, in health, in social sectors, in social protection, and in prevention of violence against women and children. So indeed, we are standing on excellent progress that the country has made since then under the different leaders, including today, with Her Excellency Mama Samia at the lead. So let me start with the first thing. You know, all the contributions today talking about health systems resilience stand on one fundamental transformational issue, and that is the equality between men and women, boys and girls. Unless we have all girls who enter school exiting, today we only have a third of girls who enter primary school exiting and making it into secondary education and out into the world of work. Unless we address this barrier, we will continue to get adolescent girls who are mothers. We will continue to have girls who don't have access to health, education, and other rights, and their families won't have access to those rights. So working concertedly on addressing these gender barriers has to be at the heart of health systems work, because without this, we will not achieve those results. And I'm proud to say that with, uh, with Mama Samia's leadership, she has already flagged this as a top priority. Uh, the second issue, and it is linked very much to health, is the issue of sanitation and water. This too has been flagged by various people, but I do want to say that currently we've made huge progress, but still less than 50% of households have access to hand washing or sanitation. If Ebola and the COVID-19 outbreak have shown us anything, it's that we have to consistently invest, 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 including in social norm change so that Tanzania can become the leader in not just East Africa, but Africa in these statistics because they underpin access to health and indeed access to better nutrition and better health. And the last point I'd like to make, seconds. last Shani. 10 seconds is, my colleague said convergence. Tanzania has excellent frameworks and policies. The National Accelerated Action and Investment Agenda for Adolescent Health and Wellbeing that was recently launched, the National Adolescent Health Development Strategy, we're developing an early childhood development framework with parliamentarians leading this, looking at children as a composite as a whole and multi-sectoral services to them will unleash Tanzania's potential. And indeed, not just low middle income, we can move up to high income country status with that. Asante Thank Asante. you very much, Shalene. Uh, now, uh, I saw um, Dr. Malina Njerekela, the Chief of Parts of Boresha Afia. I'm going to give you one minute. Pack your, your message and a take home message in one minute. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Moderator, Your Excellency, uh, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania. My one minute message uh, to you, Moderator, and the panelists is that uh, we are talking about universal health coverage. We cannot discuss universal health coverage without taking into consideration emerging infectious diseases such as COVID-19. And you have all put it very clearly, in order uh, to implement well the strategies to fight these pandemics, the issue of human resource, the issue of data, as Sanjay has said, the issue of uh, uh, partnerships from the US ambassador, 
These are some of the three major issues which we need to address as a country, but also political commitment is important because all this partnership will be forged through uh, uh, political will. We are seeing very clearly how our uh, president is taking up the role of fighting COVID-19 and we will follow suit. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Marina, for that very wonderful contribution. Now, I saw Dr. Florence Tim, the uh, Executive Director Ambref. Also, you have one minute. Thank you, Moderator, and uh, Her Excellency, our President, and all leaders. Uh, it's my pleasure to be part of this contribution. And I congratulate Benjamin Mkapa, together with the Government of Tanzania, for arranging this uh, uh, symposium in a very special way to, rem to mark the legacy of our late president. My one minute uh, contribution is actually to contribute to the role of the implementing partners. And here I mean the non-state actors and the NGOs. Uh, it has been well said by Dr. Amrisho there, but I want to indicate that as we do the implementation as NGOs or NSAs, we are working both on the supply side, but also on the demand side. And we're actually working with, uh, from the national level down to the community level. That means our contribution is actually aligned to the national priorities and the global priorities. At the same time, we're influencing the change that we intend to see. And uh, on the supply side, we're also looking at the six building blocks of the health systems but also the, on the demand side, ensure that communities' knowledge and access to knowledge about service, health services, but access to services also being attained. In so doing, much as we are supporting the government and also the, 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 I mean the capacity building, we are also building our own capacities. So in fact, there's a lot of capacities among the implementing partners, and so I encourage our funders the government to continue to support uh, NGOs. We have seen evidence from Benjamin Mkapa. My second point is on the just sustainability. One, just one. Uh, just one minute, just sustainability issue. That's very important. We, talking of sustainability, we are looking more on the financial sustainability. But in fact, you should also look at the institutional sustainability, but also social sustainability. Talking of institutional sustainability, I mean, even NGOs, I think it's high time to also finance our strategies, apart from just uh, projects, support angels to continue to exist so that they can support all these concerted efforts that are really important in sustaining our, our intended goal. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, the last uh, contribution from the floor will be Ken, Ken Kwaku. Mike? Yes, Ken Kwaku was the World Bank Country Director, former, but also an advisor to President uh, Kafa. You'll be, the, you'll be the last contributor from the floor. The mic, please, to him. Now you need to have a mic.
should be held and education sexual health education effort, the empowerment of our women in all aspects. Thirdly, I think um, it is important that we involve African local traditional leaders in the advocacy that we are doing in the use of our own languages. In East Africa, you are lucky to have Kisahili, which is broad, but in many other parts of Africa, you have dialects, etc., that are not integrated into the advocacy and the message. At the same time, we need to examine the relevance of our own moral standards, cultural practices in sexual education. We don't have to necessarily follow what the Catholic Church or what Western morals tell us. So that is, we must really use our own traditions to determine what our behavior okay. must be. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ken Kwaku. I think we have come to the end of this uh, panel discussions. And the take home message is that I'm getting from the panel discussions that uh, I'm, seeing, I'm seeing the willingness and the commitment to collaborate for, uh, and support uh, the government initiatives from the, the development partners, uh, from the private sector, and also from the uh, non state actors. Uh, the message was also very clear that we need to invest in young people, women, and the health of the children. Uh, we need to support and invest adequately on the Health Sector Strategic Plan 5 and in order to build a resilient and a robust health system. We also need to invest in a human resource for health and adopt innovative approaches to address the human resource gaps. We need to revisit the past experiences in order to come up with a strategy to address the challenge that we are currently seeing in the changing uh, disease pattern, uh, especially with the advent of non-communicable diseases and the COVID-19. But we also need to have a proper coordination and a master mass sector approach to, towards the universal health coverage. But lastly, use of data and technology in addressing and building a sustainable health system. Thank you very much. It was an honor for me to chair this uh, and moderate this panel discussions. And thank you all the panelists and all the contributors of the floor. And now I'll return the mic to the chief moderator. Thank you very much. Thank you. Applause of front. Thank you. Your Excellency, it's an opportune time. I briefly call upon the CEO of uh, Benjamin Mkapa Foundation to briefly uh, welcome you. Dr. Eleni Sonkoro is the first CEO of Benjamin Mkapa Foundation since inception up to present time. She's a medical doctor by profession and public health specialist, having experience in both public and private sector. Dr. Sonkoro, brief. Uh, introduction and uh, welcome to High Excellence, please. Thank you. Your Excellency Samia Sulu Hassan, the President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency Dr. Hussein Ali Mwinyi, President of Zanzibar. Your Excellency former Presidents of the United Republic of Tanzania and former Presidents of Zanzibar. Your Excellencies, former heads of states and governments, and friends of late former President Benjamin William Kappa, first Vice President and second Vice Presidents of the Revolutionary Government of Zanzibar, Mama Anam Kappa, the widow of the late President Benjamin William Kappa, Honorable Ministers from the Union Government and the Revolutionary Government of Zanzibar, members of Diplomatic Corps, our esteemed partners and donors, Chair and Trustees of the Benjamin Kappa Foundation Board of Trustees, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen. It is our pleasure to have you, Your Excellency, President Samia Sulu Hassan, with us this morning. We thank you for sharing with us your precious time. We just saw you arriving yesterday from Dodoma to be here with us and grace this commemoration. Tunasema asante sana, Mama. 
We started with the panel session, which you found it on the midway, with this main focus on health for all. As you may recall, Tanzania and other countries in the world are committed to implementing the Sustainable Development Goals, which are anchored on the premise of not leaving anyone behind. In the third goal, our country and the world have committed to ensuring universal health care by 2030. The aim is to ensure that everyone, everywhere, all the time, can have unhindered access to quality health care, but whether it is distance related or income related. We are delighted that your government is keen to achieve that. The just launched Health Sector Strategic Plan 5 of 2021 to 2026 has anchored on the same. We, the Mkapa Foundation, have a vested interest to see that commitment is delivered and stands to support your government in all ways possible. We were part of the HSSP 5 preparations and will be part of its implementation. The panel today was just a teaser towards that end. It reflected on what to be done by the government, non-state actors and donors to achieve the universal health coverage in Tanzania. Human capital, health infrastructure, health systems, community health systems and resilience, financing matters were all among the issues that came out from this panel. Your Excellency, the late President Benjamin William Kappa was always ahead of time. His vision for this foundation way back when it was established 15 years ago was to focus to ensure quality health for all, the far to reach and underserved areas. These are places and spaces with fewer projects, interventions, and donor-supported initiative. The strengthening of the health system, human resource for health and health infrastructure, became our major focus areas of support. He challenged us to ensure that we come out with solutions that will answer these challenges. And that has been the niche of this foundation. Your Excellency, ladies, and gentlemen, you may wish to know that since our establishment, about 20 million Tanzanians have been reached out and benefited by our programs and interventions. About 9,000 plus health workers have been employed and deployed to underserved areas. And these include skilled medical professionals as well as community health workers. This perhaps makes Mkapa Foundation the second largest employer in the health sector after the government. We have about 537 health facilities that have been built and rehabilitated countrywide. During the COVID-19 emergency, which, embarked, uh, which we had it from March 2020, we worked very closely with the government and deployed about 2,500 community health workers to assist with the community education and facilitation. Your Excellency, behind all these achievements, there is a vision of a man the one we are commemorating today. He did so much to his country while in office and after his term ended in office. He dedicated his life to the poor and underserved. We feel strongly that we have a duty to honor his life and celebrate his legacy. We're determined to carry over from where he ended and doing our level best to keep his ideas and conviction immortal and impactful. It is why we commemorate this day from now onwards. I welcome Your Excellency to be with us, and we are all excited to hear from you today. Asante sana, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. We do now have an opportunity to hear the impact of Benjamin Mkapa life to society and none but Ambassador Ombani Sefue, former Chief Secretary, is going to deliver that. Ambassador Sefue is a former Chief Secretary to the President of Tanzania, and previously he was the permanent representative for Tanzania to the United Nations between 1993 and 95. He worked as a speechwriter and personal assistant to two presidents, President Ali Hassan Mwinyi, 1993 to 1995, and President Benjamin Mkapa, 1995 to 2005. Ambassador Sefue, please. 
Your Excellency, President Samia Sulu Hassan, Your Excellency, Dr. Hussein Mwinyi, President of the Regional Government of Zanzibar, Excellencies, former presidents, leadership of the foundation, Mama Mkapa and the Mkapa family, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. A year has passed since President Kappa was called to glory. Fond memories, deep emotions simmer in me. What can I say that will do justice to his life and impact? But let me try. Madam President, I'm honored to speak today as we remember him, an outstanding individual a loving husband, dedicated father, a doting grandfather, and president of the third phase government of Tanzania. But who really was Mkapa? He began his public career in the foreign service, and his passion for foreign relations and international cooperation never ended. His masterful conduct of our diplomacy has left a lasting impact on Tanzania's image. He also went into the media and fell in love with it. Not just any trash that masquerades as journalism, but quality journalism. Then politics called, and fortunately for Tanzania, he answered the call. And the rest is history. President Kappa liked to read newspapers, journals, books, I often helped him identify and acquire new books and journals. When traveling abroad, he would always find time to visit bookshops, browse, buy. Otherwise, I'd help him with this. He preferred reading books to idle chatter or self-saving flattery. It could be difficult to get to his inner circle. An excellent student of literature, he lived William Shakespeare's dictum. Love all, trust a few, do wrong to none. He was always a leader, a leader always, never a ruler. He wanted people to follow him, not because they are fearful of him, rather because they trusted him, and he earned their trust. He hated the cult of personality, refusing to be called him to Kufu, or to have his picture on the national currency. He disputed the notion that politics is a dirty game. An erudite debater, he welcomed being challenged and dared anyone to dislodge him from his, from, uh, from his intellectual pedestal of thought and belief. During the 1995 elections, a political debate was conducted between presidential candidates and his formidable debating skills were in full display. Others saw him as arrogant. He wasn't. He just did not like mediocrity. He always listened carefully to all opinions and perspectives before he made a decision. He believed people should be able to disagree without being disagreeable. Aristotle said, it is the mark of an educated mind to be able to entertain a thought without accepting it. And President Kappa would concur. He was a devout Catholic, attending mass every Sunday. He respected other people's faiths, a matter he insisted was personal and private. His faith did not influence how he ran the government or related with people. He valued work and gave it the best he had with amazing discipline in whatever he did. He lived the code of life of his Benedictine missionary teachers, ora and labora, pray and work. He worked hard even when he was sick, like when he was admitted to hospital in Zurich for surgery, even insisting on delivering his monthly address to the nation from there. That was Mkapa. As a leader, he held the country together 
and helped us overcome political, social, economic, and natural challenges as one people, one country. A firm believer in the union between Tanzania and main, Tanzania mainland and Zanzibar, he spared no effort to defend and strengthen it. He always insisted that even in the context of a unique union structure, we were and must remain one nation, the United Republic of Tanzania. He was the comforter in chief when Mwalim Nyerere passed away, when his vice president, Dr. Omar Ali Juma, died, when El Nino floods wrecked havoc, when MV Bukoba capsized, and when the nation faced political challenges, including those in Zanzibar. He led increased national efforts to fight the scourge of HIV and AIDS and its impact. He believed in good governance and strong, strong but accountable institutions, holding that government is not about an individual, but about such institutions led by capable people of integrity and dedication. He hated corruption. One of his first decisions as president was to establish the Warioba Commission on Corruption. He believed in truth and transparency, wazi na ukweli, as he would put it. And he would say, I'd rather you hate me for being open with you than having you love me for not being straight with you. At the end of each month, he would talk directly to the people through radio and television. It was like civic education at the national scale, and citizens would stop whatever they were doing to listen to him. He carried forward the open economy agenda of his predecessor, President Mwini, creating a conducive environment for private sector participation in the economy and developing a new partnership between government and the private sector. He created institutional frameworks for dialogue with investors, including those in the mining sector, enabling him to open four gold mines during the last four years of his administration. He established forums for this dialogue, which he personally chaired, including the CEO Roundtable, the Tanzania National Business Council, the International Investors Roundtable, and many others. And these were open and objective dialogues. His government did not go there to defend entrenched positions and he won the trust and confidence of local and international investors. Although deep down he remained a socialist, he believed there were many ways to skin the cat. Development partners responded positively, development assistance increased, and he got debt relief for the country. He expanded primary and secondary education, enrollment, removing school fees in primary schools, to ensure all children complete a full primary education. He created Development Vision 2025. Although he created the space for large-scale in, uh, investments, he remained a firm believer in inclusive development, that no one should be left behind. He therefore established the Business Environment Strengthening for Tanzania program to reduce the cost of doing business, including for micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. He believed in the concept of smart partnership, win-win situation for everyone nationally and globally. He co-chaired the Investment Climate Facility that strived to make Africa more attractive to domestic and foreign investment. President Kappa embraced Mwalim Nyerere's Pan-African and nationalist agenda and ideals. Like Mwalim, he strongly opposed the notion of exploitation he had great empathy for suffering people everywhere. He strongly promoted and defended African interests in the global political and economic spheres. This was evident in the regional, continental, and global responsibilities he undertook, whether in power or out of power. And this included the World Commission on the Social Dimension of Globalization, the Blair Commission, the Commission for Africa, the Smart Partnership International Dialogue, and many others. In retirement, he was patron of Uongozi Institute's Africa Leadership Forum, bringing together fellow retired African presidents like Presidents Mbeki, Obasanjo, Mohai, Chisano, among others, 
to discuss matters of topical interest for the continent with sitting presidents and other current and future leaders and stakeholders. I do hope the forum will be sustained in his honor and memory. President Kappa believed in peace and stability in Tanzania and in Africa. He was active in peacemaking efforts in Eastern Africa and Great Lakes region. From him I learned that peace comes not from the absence of conflict in life, but from the ability to cope with it. President Kappa was concerned that economic growth was not reducing poverty at the rate he would have liked to see. He did not want to see anyone left behind. So he took several initiatives. He established TASAF to empower the poor to work themselves out of poverty. And the impact of TASAF on poverty reduction is demonstrable. TASAF has now reached all corners of Tanzania, giving poor people the tools that they need for self-development. He established Mkurabita, property and business formalization program, to empower the poor by increasing their access to financial markets and other services through formalization of their property rights, enabling them to leverage their assets in a market economy dispensation. Other initiatives include, include the Tanzania Mini Tiger Plan 2020. In order to unlock broad-based growth, through special economic zones and industrial parks, hoping to use them to attain the 10% GDP growth that he had hoped for. So he established this Tanzania Mini Tiger Plan 2020 to realize that goal. In retirement, as we heard, he established this foundation to support government efforts in the health sector. And he was deeply disturbed, as we heard, by unequal access to quality care, especially in very remote and underserved areas. Madam President, for 10 years, President Mkapa provided leadership to Tanzania, leaving us with considerable experience and knowledge of what works and what does not. What to do with this knowledge is the challenge of current and future leaders and citizens. He believed in human rights, whether political or civil, whether economic, social, cultural. And these include the right to life, a life in peace, the right to earn a livelihood through equal economic opportunities and job creation, the right to basic health care, both preventive and curative, the right to justice and education, the right to political expression, but not political thuggery, the right to freedom of expression and worship without infringing or curtailing the freedom and faith of others. Madam President, I do hope I've done justice to his legacy. Above all, I hope that were he to hear me today, he would have approved and felt vindicated for having trusted me to be his personal assistant during those 10 years. After he launched his autobiography two years ago, he had determined to translate it into Kiswahili so that all Tanzanians could read and learn from it. As always, I agreed to assist him, and the week he died, I had planned to see him so that we could start. Now he's gone. But with Mama's, Mama Mkapa's approval and the support of Wongozi Institute, I am determined to conclude the work exactly as he had intended to. <clears throat> and with the penmanship, he would have approved. And may God help me to serve him well even now. Yes, even this sad time has flown. A year has passed. But his memory remains fresh and enduring in our hearts and minds. May he continue to rest in eternal peace. And may God continue to grant solace to Mama Anna, to the children, to the grandchildren. And I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you very much, uh, Ambassador Sefue. Your Excellency, this event is followed globally, and uh, we got in touch with various heads of states 
One of them is a former Prime Minister of United Kingdom, Right Honorable Tony Blair, because of uh, COVID travel restriction, he really wanted to be here physically with us. He has sent his condolence and message. But there's a short video of less than three minutes that he wants all of us in this room and globally to hear what he has to say for President uh, um, Kapaligas. Tony Blair, video, please. Hello, everyone. It's a, a real pleasure and honor to say these words in celebration of the life and achievements of Ben Mkapa. Ben started, as you, you all know, mentored by Julius Nereri. He was Minister for Foreign Affairs at the time of the liberation struggle across Africa. He played an enormous part under the guidance of President Nereri, his mentor. But then, when he became president of Tanzania, his achievements were quite extraordinary. He inherited a very difficult set of economic circumstances. He stabilized the currency. He reduced inflation dramatically down, I think, from 27% to 4%. He increased foreign direct investment in the country ninefold. And he built a lot of what is today Tanzania's modern infrastructure, particularly on roads. I knew him, got to know him most, through his work with the Commission for Africa, the body that was set up prior to the Glen Eagles G7 summit in 2005, where Africa was going to be one of the main topics. Ben's contribution in the run-up to that summit was immense. He was a passionate advocate for the continent of Africa. And out of that came the commitments to debt cancellation that Ben himself then used as president in order to be able to change radically the number of children at school, not just in Tanzania, but across the continent. Then, of course, after leaving office, he founded the Ben and Kappa Foundation that bears his name, that does such amazing health care work that has advocated, for example, not just in respect of HIV AIDS, but across the whole pattern of healthcare needs in Tanzania and elsewhere, and is a big supporter of universal health coverage. I think he'd be immensely proud of the work the foundation's done on his behalf and in his memory. So I look back on, on my time and my friendship with Ben as one of the most rewarding political associations I had in my time in office and afterwards. And I regard him as someone who was an outstanding leader, a great patriot, a statesman, a campaigner, and a warm and decent and good-hearted human being. So it really is for me, a, a, as I say, a pleasure and an honor to say these words in support of his commemoration. His name lives on, it deserves to live on. His legacy is one of which he and all who work with him can be immensely proud. Thank you very much. <laughs> Your Excellency, when the government of Tanzania and the Benjamin Mkapa Foundation was planning for this we also reached to the former president of the United States, William Jefferson Clinton, Bill Clinton, for the second president of the United States of America. He really wanted to be with us, but again, as the situation dictates, he could not travel. He commented that when this symposium started, it would be very early hours of the morning. He may try to join, maybe he has joined virtually or not, However, he was generous enough to send his message to you, Your Excellency, and to the audience, and I'll request his personalized message to be played as he commemorate the work of President Mkapa. Billy Madam King. President, distinguished guest, I am honored that you've invited me to join you and the Mkapa Foundation today. 
to celebrate the life and legacy of our friend, President Benjamin and Papa. I want to begin by sharing my deep condolences with you and all the people of Tanzania on the passing of two presidents in less than one year, President Mkapa and President John Magafuli. I was proud to work with President Mkapa when I was President of the United States and through the Clinton Health Access Initiative, or CHI, after leaving office. In 2002, he invited CHI to partner with the government of Tanzania to expand access to HIV AIDS treatments and save the lives of thousands of Tanzanians dying from the virus each year. As Chai worked with global manufacturers to reduce drug prices, the government, under the personal leadership of President Mkapa, worked with our support to strengthen the health system, including the expansion of HIV testing laboratories, supply chain health infrastructure, and data systems. The vision and commitment shown by President Mkapa help make Tanzania the first country in the region to have a comprehensive and government-led antiretroviral program. I congratulate the government that those efforts have only continued to grow stronger. President Mkapa was also passionate about strengthening human resources for health. And in 2005, we joined together to create the Mkapa Fellows Program to address the health worker crisis that was hindering the scale-up of HIV care and treatment services. The program used creative strategies for attracting and retaining health workers in remote areas, including deploying teams of highly skilled providers in hard-to-reach facilities. On my visits to Tanzania through the years, I was always pleased to visit with MCAPA fellows and see their progress. I am so gratified that the work of the MCAPA Foundation has now expanded to address other health issues beyond HIV AIDS, including the pursuit of national universal health coverage. We can't shy away from the need to have well-organized primary health services, a robust disease surveillance system, adequate domestic capacity to innovate and scale up production and logistics of much needed medical products, and a flexible system that can learn continuously and adapt to meet changing global health needs. CHI is committed to working with the government of Tanzania to achieve this vision and to continue addressing urgent health challenges, including HIV, AIDS, malaria, vaccines, reproductive health, non-communicable diseases, and the COVID-19 pandemic. So thank you again for the opportunity to be part of this special tribute. I liked and admired President Mkapa very much. And my very best wishes to all of you and to all the people. Tanzania. Your Excellency, as uh, mentioned early, President Mkapa groomed young medical staff, and uh, these are beneficiaries of Mkapa Foundation. We have uh, 726 of them, but we have over 5,000 health workers across the country. There is one particular young man that was uh, groomed by President Mkapa. Right when he graduated from a medical university at Muimbili in 2004. So he was taken as a Mkapa Fellow, and this young man was later employed by the government as a medical officer in Morogoro, then later transferred to SIA. And now, Madam President, as we speak, this young man, Dr. Kusire Ukio, is a regional medical doctor of Morogoro. He was groomed by President Mkapa. And your government, Madam President, when the opportunities for employment emerged, he was readily available because of the expertise and experience working in rural areas. He is going to give testimony of what Mkapa did. Dr. Kusir, a few minutes, maybe two, maximum three, please. morning. Your Excellency, President of the Iranian Republic of Tanzania, Your Excellency, President of Zanzibar, former heads of states, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is, a, it is, a, it is with great honor 
I stand here in front of your presence to say a few words about the former president and settler of the foundation. We, together with my other, my other fellows, were among the first entrants to the Mkapa Fellows Program and had the privilege of facing unforeseen challenges head on. After being posted to one of the underserved areas in the country, I came to the true realization of actual challenges that were ahead of us. Key among which, as have already been said, were scarcity of resources, geographical barriers, and how best to link and integrate with existing government structures to bring about the needed results. Before being posted, the foundation imparted us with some skills and knowledge needed to address the expected challenges, but a lot was acquired on the field. The Ferro's program was my inception to public service, and despite the turbulent journey, it has been key to some of my achievements at certain levels. However, these achievements cannot be attributed to any one single person, but a team comprising of health professionals as well as government and non-government institutions. One of the key lessons that I have learned in this journey is the role of leadership in achieving set goals. Challenges are bound to happen and exist, and the role of leadership is to provide a way to meet set goals despite the challenges. This has been the key and the backbone of the foundation's success and hallmark of the late settler and founder, founder His Excellency Benjamin Rimina Mukapa. Key leadership attributes that are recognized, portrayed by the late settler, were an idealized influence. He acted as a role model to many of us. He still does. He was a visionary with a clear focus on the target and showed significance towards the cause. He emphasized on being creative, innovative, and tolerant of seemingly extreme situations. He took a keen interest on the well-being of people and paid attention to details. These constitute, ladies and gentlemen, key features of a transformational leader and have been key to the success of the foundation. One key addition to this from me is to keep living while you are gone. And that's why we're still gathered here today, celebrating his life and believing in his, in his cause despite his absence. May he continue to rest eternally in peace, and may God bless Africa, God bless Tanzania, and God bless the Benjamin William Kappa Foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellency, as I mentioned earlier, among the people following us virtually is President, uh, former President of Nigeria, Olesegune Obasanja, a comrade to President Mkapa, and uh, he sent his greetings, and uh, because of technology, he has recorded a short video clip so that we all get to hear what President Obasanja has to say. President Obasanja, please. With the death of President Benjamin William Kappa of Tanzania, Africa has lost a vocal advocate for unity, development, and progress of Africa. I came to know him as a chief information officer before he was assigned as high commissioner of his country to Nigeria in 1976 when I was military head of state. And I believe his choice for that post was influenced by the need for close work together between Nigeria and Tanzania and his country on the issues of decolonization and apartheid in South Africa in particular and Southern Africa as a whole. And of course, it happened that way. Over that period, the frontline states in 
identified action against the regimes in South Africa and Southern Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, and supported fighting against reactionary forces in Angola. Nigeria became a member of the frontline state. Benjamin Nkapa worked relentlessly for these special enhanced relationships between Nigeria and the frontline states. Later on, he became the elected president of his country. At of the time, I also became a democratically elected president of Nigeria. Again, we had opportunity to work together. He never at any time failed to see his role in office or out of office as a champion for Africa liberation, unity, development, and progress. I found in him a reliable friend, an ally, and a confidant. We worked together under the auspices of the African Union for NEPAD and APRM. He made constructive contributions at the various fora in and out of government at charting a new future for Africa, particularly in the areas of HIV AIDS, launching of the ILO report on a fair globalization, creating opportunities for all, the South Center World Commission on the Social Dimension of Globalization, among others. Upon our exit from the presidency, I frequently called on him for support and advice on issues of interest to Africa. He was always welcoming, accommodating, and he offered wide counsel an open, charitable, and progressive heart. He was passionate about peace and security in the Great Lakes region, where we both worked together, as well as on leadership issues in Africa. He spearheaded an annual meeting titled Africa Leadership and he made me a regular annual participant on that floor. He was with me a member of Interaction Council of Former Heads of Government, of which I was a partner member as far back as 1983, and also a member of Club Timatri. At all the meetings he participated in, his voice rang loudly for Africa and nothing less than the best interest of Africa. We cannot do better than to sustain his legacy as a true African leader committed to African development and progress. That was his cause and it is his legacy to be cherished and sustained. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you, President Obasanjo. Now, Your Excellency, we hear remarks from Board of Trustees, and I'll welcome the chairperson of Board of Trustee Dr. Adelina Kimambo, who is a public health specialist with over 40 years experience, having worked in the government in the Ministry of Health in Tanzania as Director of Training for Human Resource Development 
and co-chair of Public-Private Partnership Health Forum, TPH, Dr. Adeline Kimambo. Your Excellence, Samia Sulu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellence, Dr. Hussein Ali Mwini, President of Zanzibar. Your Excellencies, former Presidents of the United Republic of Tanzania and former Presidents of Zanzibar. Your Excellencies, former Heads of State and Governments and friends of late former President Benjamin William Mkapa. Mama Anne Mkapa, widow of the late President Benjamin William Mkapa, Honorable Ministers of the United Republic of Tanzania and the Revolutionary Government of Zanzibar, members of diplomatic corps, our esteemed partners, trustees of the Benjamin William Mkapa Foundation Board of Trustees, representatives from the private sector and the non-state actors, family and friends, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. I'm standing here on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Mkapa Foundation to once again thank you for coming, for honoring us with your presence in commemorating our esteemed, beloved settler and founder of the foundation, His Excellency late Benjamin William Umkapa. I happened by the accident of history to be the first chair of the Board of Trustees after the death of the former and settler. What an event trembling in the is the fact that it did not see, I did not see it coming anytime soon. It was so, it was so comforting to be the chair of the great founder, foundation, knowing that having a heavy weight settler on my back in the name of President Benjamin William Kappa, I could consult him with anything, anytime, and each reach out to his guidance and wisdom all the time. You can imagine how devastated I was and how empty I felt to have lost him that sudden. A year after his death, I have yet to recover. Fortunately, late former President William Mkapa was a visionary man. He believed so much in institution than personal. For that reason, earlier on, he entrusted the board with governing function. Little did we know then he was preparing us for enduring and sustaining this foundation before his fiscal presence. A year after, we thank, a year after we thank him for his foresight and vision, he prepared us to so well to carry over from where he ended. We are already and determined to march ahead tall and bold. We will follow his footsteps and sustain his legacy to our children, children's children, and the children after them. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, a lot has been achieved by the Foundation in the past 15 years of our existence. This is evident in numbers and in impact. About 537 health facilities at different places countrywide have been built and rehabilitated. These facilities have been built in far and hard to reach areas which otherwise would have been left out. By doing so, we have increased and improved access to quality health care for women, children, men, youth, and elderly in underserved areas. Together with that, we have 
employed about 9,000 health workers to bridge the gap that existed, and about 90% of them have been retained in service. Thanks to the infrastructure that were built by the foundation that provided an incentive for many to remain. Beyond strengthening health system, health infrastructure, and human resources for health, the foundation has not shied away from emerging and disruptive health crisis. During the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic in early 2020, the foundation swiftly joined the national efforts in responding to the outbreak. To date, we have deployed 583 skilled health workers and 2,466 community health workers working in different parts of the country in regions on risk to ensure health promotion, prevention, care and treatment of COVID-19 cases as per defined national guidelines. The success and the impact we have recorded could not have been possible if not for the generous support we received from our donors and partners. These include the Norway government that provided the initial financial support to establish the foundation in the first five years. Sooner, the Global Fund of, for AIDS TB and Malaria, Irish Aid, Abbott Fund, USAID, UN, UNICEF, U, UKFOSDO, formerly it was DFID, UNFPA, UK, Comic Relief, and Walter Reed followed suit. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for joining with us this long. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, going forward and ensuring the continuity of this foundation, the legacy and the impact demands that we have in place a reliable and sustainable funding. And this is the very purpose why I took this podium this morning. My task is one and simple, to introduce to you the Benjamin William Mkapa Enrollment Fund and to request you, Your Excellence, to inaugurate it before your key not speech. The Enrollment Fund will provide the foundation with a sustainable and long-term source of income. It is our target to raise about 33.7 billion Tanzanian shillings, which is equivalent to 15.2 million US dollars during the first five years from year 2021-22 to year 2025-26. These funds will also contribute to bridge the gaps in the implementation of our five years strategic plan for 2019 to 2024, particularly those projects and interventions that do not attract donor funds. The, the mobilized financial resources will be invested in perpetuity to generate five fixed income streams that will be used towards supporting and sustaining the work of the foundation. All key underlying investment principles of preservation of purchasing power, risk aversion, and adherence to investment discipline will be applied by the foundation in ensuring the enrollment fund investment is worthwhile and meets the intended goals. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this enrollment fund, which is to be launched today, will aim at supporting the following areas. One, awarding of annual scholarships, health workers, 
keen to continue with further studies in clinical, public health, and any other relevant issues in medical field. This will target to fill up gaps of specific health cadres in high demand within the country and particularly those serving at the primary healthcare levels. Two, facilitate deployment of skilled health workers, also known as the Mkapa Fellows, to understaffed areas with the intention to curb the bottleneck of shortage of skilled health personnel in both government and non-government healthcare facilities to ensure equitable quality access of health services within the society. Three, to support remote health facilities within the country with refurbishment and or equipment by targeting the basic essential health services to save lives such as maternal, newborn, child and adolescent health care. Number four, to support the emerging and re-emerging health conditions and emergencies such as COVID-19, Ebola, and the like by aligning to the internationally defined principle of emergence preparedness, readiness, and response. Number five, awarding the civil societies and all grassroots community-based organizations combating challenges of public health significance with the aim of empowering community to continue identifying and having community-owned solutions through working within sustainable community-based systems and structures. And six, to support the annual Mkapa Ligas Month and other board approved interventions. Your Excellence, I'm standing here to assure you that the BMF Enrollment Fund will be managed with transparency, accountability, flexibility, efficiency, and trustworth. The Board of Trustees will be the owner and overall responsible to govern the Enrollment Fund, including directing and monitoring the investment management of funds assets, and this fund will also be subjected to external auditor review. Our, our track record speaks for itself. Every shilling will be invested prudently, and every cent will be spent judiciously and accounted for transparently. As soon as the endowment fund is launched today, the foundation will begin the outreach phase for mobilizing resources for the fund. Yes, the figure may appear big, but our purpose and our partnership are big enough to achieve this target. And we don't expect to raise this amount alone. When we put this projection, we had you in our, our partners, our supporters, and friends in our mind. You have all along been with us, and our gut feeling tells us that you will march towards with us. We have confidence in you that together we shall achieve this target. Your Excellence, ladies and gentlemen, mine is an appeal. An appeal to the government of Tanzania revolutionary government of Zanzibar, our development partners, private sector, friends and well-wishers of the foundation, including BMF board and staff, to generously consider donating into our endowment fund. In this way, we will all be honoring his life and legacy in words and deeds. As you may all recall, self-reliance was late President Mkapa's uh, deal, idea, and a repetitive appeal. He's, he always 
dared us to find innovative ways and means of ensuring that sometimes later this foundation can stand on its own and reducing dependence to donors to finance its programs and projects. We thought this is the best way to honor him and live to his leaders. If he is watching us from where he is, I'm sure he will be giving us his uh, learning smile. We have come, we have done part of the call. We ask you to join us. I thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Your Excellency and uh, those who are following us across the globe, when President Mkapa retired from the office in 2005, he handed over the mantle to the fourth president of United Republic of Tanzania, Dr. Mrisho Kikwete. It's befitting to hear the legacy from succession point of view. President Mkapa, for those who are following us across the globe, was a keen person to develop, and he worked with President Kikwete as his long-term serving foreign affairs ministers for 10 years. Prior to that, Dr. Kikwete served in various portfolio, including Minister of Finance, Minister of Water, Energy and Natural Resources. And prior to that, Mr. Kikwete was into the Central Committee of the ruling party, our Chama Chama Pinduzi CCM. As the Minister for Foreign Affairs, together with President Mkapa, Dr. Kikwete led Tanzania effort in bringing peace to Africa Great Lakes region. Dr. Kikwete served as chairman of SADC Organ of Security, Defense, and Politics in 2007. He was also very much involved in searching for solution to political crisis in Southern Africa. Dr. Kikwete believes and uses his wealth of experience and knowledge to improve the lives of people in Tanzania and across the world. He has formed his foundation, Jakar Kikwete Foundation, where he serves as a chairman presently, and the mission of his foundation is to work with the government and other stakeholders to bring progressive change and transformation to people's quality of life. President Dr. Kikwete, you may take the stage. We are keen to hear the succession legacy and impact of Dr. Kikwete to the society. Please, Dr. Kikwete. Your Excellency, Samia Suru Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency, Dr. Hussein Ali Hassan Mwinyi, President of Zanzibar and Chairman of the Zanzibar Revolutionary Council. Former President Al Haji Ali Hassan Mwinyi, Former President Tamani Karume, the first and second Vice President of Zanzibar, Mama Anna Mkapa and family, Arab ministers from the Union and Zanzibar government, Dr. Adeline Kimambo, Chair of the Benjamin Mkapa Foundation, members of the Board of Trustees, Dr. Helen Senkoro, CEO of the Mkapa Foundation, 
members of the diplomatic corps, fellow invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I thank the organizers for inviting me and for associating me with this historic event. I commend the board and management of the Benjamin M. Kappa Foundation for conceiving the idea of having this symposium and for organizing it so well. The late President Benjamin William Kappa, my big brother, my friend, my leader, my mentor, and my predecessor very much deserves this kind of treatment. <laughs> Celebrating his life and leaving his legacy are the right things to do. I'm glad this symposium is reminding us on the importance of doing that and on how best to do it. I'm hoping this will not be a one-off event, but it is going to be held from time to time and probably at regular intervals. Excellency President, distinguished participants, I've known and worked with President, the late President Benjamin M. Kappa for over four decades before and after he became president and later after he retired. Both of us were members of the National Executive Committee of Chama Chama Pinduzi since the 1980s to 2006 when he retired as chairman of the party. But I continued for another 10 years before I also retired in 2016. When he was a member of parliament for Nanyumbu constituency in Masasi district, in 1988, I had the rare privilege and honor of being the party secretary for that district. Later, for seven years, we were together in the cabinet of our second president, His Excellency Ali Hassan Mwini. I started deputy minister for energy minerals, then I became minister for water, energy and minerals. And then minister of finance, he was minister of foreign affairs, later he was, became minister for science and technology, higher education science and technology. When he was elected president, first time in 1995, and second time, the year 2000, he appointed me to be his foreign minister. For all the 10 years he served at the highest office of our nation. This was the time we came to work closely and I became one of his confidants, not only on diplomacy, but on other national issues as well. I am eternally grateful that when I contested the presidency in the year 2005, to succeed him, he supported me unconditionally. <clears throat> when I became president, he was one of my dependable confidence and a reliable advisor. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, throughout his life in public service, as a civil servant, to be particular as a foreign service officer, as a journalist, as ambassador, member of parliament, minister, and president, he put service to the people at the top, as a top priority agenda. 
He was a very bright guy. No doubt about it. Big brain. He was visionary. Hardworking. Very eloquent. Both in writing and speech. A great Pan-Africanist. And in an unwavering believer and promoter of regional and African unity and integration. He was passionate in the pursuit of his goals and uncompromising on issues he had strong beliefs in. He was tough. And at times, he was rough. When it was necessary for him to be one. <laughs> but he was a very compassionate person who cared for the sick, the poor, the suffering, and the disadvantaged. There are a number of policy initiatives and measures he took, as well as instruments he put in place and institutions he established which speak for themselves about how compassionate Benjamin William Mkapa was. In the interest of time, the institutions are many. Allow me. Madam President, to mention a few of these. He established the Primary Education Development Program, MEM, Pango wa Maendeleo ya Elimu ya Msingi, which was meant to revamp primary education and make it accessible to all children of primary school age. President Mkapa conceived the Tanzania Development Vision 2025 to take this great nation of ours from a least developed country to a middle income status. He established TACAIDS to spearhead the fight against HIV and AIDS. Dr. Fatima Mrisho knows it better than most of us. He established, he conceived the Tanzania growth and poverty reduction strategy, Mkukuta, to help people move from poverty to prosperity. Later, the Tanzania Social Action Fund to improve livelihoods in poor families at household levels. The list is long in the interest of time. Those men and everybody else who speaks who has spoken, they have mentioned a number of them. Your Excellencies, it was his compassionate heart which led President Mkapa to establish the Benjamin Mkapa Foundation in April 2006, with the objective of advancing the health agenda in Tanzania and Africa. He was the founder and settler. He chose a very able man, young man, to be chair of the Board of Trustees in the name of Dr. Hussein Ali Hassan Mwini. I think I'm getting the, the, um, the record correct. You were a Minister of State. At that time? Huh? Because you were you Minister of State in my time. <laughs> <laughs> eh? 
2005. Eh? Eh? The foundation was established in 2006. And at that time, he was Minister of State in the office of the Vice President. <clears throat> Guided by the vision of his founder and settler. And the able stewardship of the board chair, strong foundation was built, which has enabled the Benjamin M. Kappa Foundation to become a formidable and a world-renowned institution it is today. Hearty congratulations to its founder and settler, but many compliments to Dr. Hussein Mwinyi for his able leadership and laying solid foundation for this wonderful institution. <clears throat> also sums up to the successive chairs of the board after Dr. Mwinyi And to the illustrious CEO, Dr. Helen, for a job very well done. Kazi ya bongo na mikono yenu zinaonekana. Excellencies, I was privileged to have witnessed the establishment of this wonderful institution. I'm happy to say that the Benjamin M. Kappa Foundation was born, grew, and thrived during my administration. I gave them all the necessary support they needed to make sure that it stands on its feet and it performs its objectives, its mission and vision. At the time of its establishment, our country was in the grip of the menace of HIV and AIDS malaria, and tuberculosis as major health-related risks. Also, there was a serious shortage of human resource for health in our health facilities. The Benjamin Kappa Foundation volunteered to work hand in glove with the government to find homegrown solutions to these and other challenges facing the health sector. In doing so, the foundation complemented my government's efforts in implementing the 10-year primary health care development program. In fact, ours was a successor to the President Mkapa's national health policy. Because when I came in, there was already a 10-year program Health, national health policy, which was ending in 2007. So we came up with a successor program. That is what we call primary health care. Pango wa maendeleo wa afya ya msingi. Mam. Zemkapa likuwa na mem ya ilimu. Mimi nikawa na mam. Mpango wa maendeleo ya afya ya msingi a 10-year program from 2007 to 2017, and the fifth government came up with another program which is now being implemented. Your Excellency, one of the toughest challenges I faced during my presidency was about getting skilled health workers to work in the needy but challenging settings despite the fact that we in government were able and ready to pay their personal emoluments and other benefits. We had the money to pay them, but we had difficulties sending those people there. You appoint them, they would go and say, oh, nakwenda kukuchukua mizigo yangu, he never comes back.
So this is, which was one of our, our, our biggest challenges. The Benjamin Mkapa Foundation came in to work with us in government, develop innovative health HRH solutions. The Mkapa Fellows and the others are part of this part of, part of this innovative program. As a result, we were able to retain 1,147 skilled health workers who later, who later transitioned to government systems, both in Tanzania, mainland, and Zanzibar. They started with them. Later, we, we picked them up because they're already there. We had the problems of taking them there and making them stay. Now that they were already there, we said, okay, fine, now we are going to take them and employ them, become our, our, our employees. The foundation provided scholarships to about 937 health workers, pre-service training for 937 health workers. Furthermore, through collaborative efforts with, the, with our government, development partners, the foundation was able to construct 482 staff houses at primary health facilities. Because the other, the other problem we had was that you take somebody and the, the, there was no accommodation. This young man comes from the university. He goes there. He's so excited. He says, okay, this is your office. So where do you stay? Tafuta, tafuta. Takawa, tafuta, tafuta. Oh. He goes there, he looks at the houses. Some of them are matembe too. <laughs> so he says, okay, I'm coming. Let me just go and get organized. <laughs> Never comes back. So the support we got on the construction of housing for the health professionals was a big shot in the arm for the government. For which we are grateful. But as it has already been said, the foundation also constructed and equipped 11 operating theaters, 55 health providers, trained 55 health providers on comprehensive obstetric care to keep it all. Benjamin Mkapa helped train health managers from 134 local government authorities. They've been critical partners, important partners, demanding from us nothing other than the opportunity to be able to work. The remarkable investments contributed not only to retaining health, skilled health workers but also to increase the, the patient enrolled, patients enrolled in HIV care and treatment. You know, at the beginning, people were, even, even the medical professionals, They were shying away from handling AIDS patients. But with the support we got from the Kappa Foundation, the people, the skilled personnel we got, at least this barrier was, 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 was sort of removed. And we got more and more people now coming to the health facilities. Because at that time, to say that you, to be diagnosed that you 
you, 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 you are HIV positive <laughs> was a big, 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 big problem. So with these professionals, we were able now to handle people better. That was a remarkable contribution in the, and in the improvement of Tanzania's efforts to address the effects of the HIV and the AIDS pandemic. In collaboration with many partners and the efforts of the government, we were able in 2005, 2015, in fact, we were able to meet the MDG for reduction of uh, infections from HIV one year ahead of 2015, because we moved it from 7.1 to to 5.1 by 2015 when I left office. We were able to, to this is one, one, one I think, we, we, we are, of the MDGs, we were able to attain two on HIV reductions and child mortality. <laughs> but we failed to meet the, 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 the target for maternal mortality and newborn mortality. It is still a problem up to this day. We are still grappling with it. So I'd like to use this opportunity to applaud the foundation for being a reliable and dependable partner of the government of the Republic of Tanzania and the revolutionary government of Zanzibar. Please stay the cause and continue to do the good work. I trust you and continue. I would also like to, to commend our two governments, the Union government and the Zanzibar government, for sustaining and enabling environment for non-state actors to flourish. Please. Because if, if the government adopts a policy against non-state actors, the NGOs for that matter. If the government adopts that, then all these non-state actors, including BMF, my foundation, will find it so hard to work. President Kappa created a base. I, I continued with it, and I'm glad it is now being sustained. Because the government alone will not be able to do everything. If you bring in many actors, including non-state actors, you'll be able to, you would be able to do much more and a lot more. Excellency is the example of President Benjamin William Mkapa of establishing his foundation inspired me on retirement to establish the Jakaya Marisho Equator Foundation. We are dealing with a number of issues. On health, my foundation is more on maternal, child, newborn, newborn child, and adolescent health. However, we join forces with the Benjamin Mkapa Foundation and other players in the fight against HIV. For we know when you struggle against maternal and child mortality, one of the causal factor is HIV infection. So we are not we are we are not denying or we are we are not denigrating the significance of also joining hands in the fight against HIV. At the personal level, let me reiterate that. My championship of the HIV free generation campaign will continue unabated. Your Excellency, Madam President, President of Zanzibar, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, there is a lot. 
I can say about the life and wonderful work done by my brother, my friend, my mentor, for the people of Masasi, the people of Tanzania, the East Africa region, Southern Africa, Africa and the world. It suffices to say what I've said today. But once again, I congratulate him for the wise decision he took to establish the Benjamin M. Kappa Foundation. The foundation has been doing a tremendous job which keeps reminding people, reminding us about the man behind the vision. Through the work of this foundation, through the work of his foundation, Ben Kappa will always be remembered and will continue, and we will continue to live his legacy. Let's all of us keep praying to Almighty God to rest his soul, to rest the soul of our beloved President Benjamin William Mkapa in eternal peace. Amen. Thank you for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, President Kikweta. I now call the Minister for Health, Community Development, Gender, Elder, and Children, Dr. Doroth Kwajima, to give an introduction and to invite the President of Zanzibar and Chairman of the Revolution Council, and the rest of the proceeding will take after that. Please, Dr. Kwajima. Your Excellency, Samia Sulu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellency, Dr. Hussein al Mwinyi, President of Zanzibar and the Chair of the Revolutionary Council. Your Excellencies, former Presidents of the United Republic of Tanzania and the former President of Zanzibar, Mama Anam Kapa, widow of the late Benjamin William Mkapa, dear distinguished guests, protocol observed. Na wasalimu kwa jina la jamuri ya mungano wa Tanzania. Asante ni sana. It is my pleasure and a great honor to address this important day that marks our thoughtful gratitude to a person who transformed our country's economy and specifically healthy sector through his leadership style that embraced the principles of good governance, leadership, and accountability. Kama tulivo zoya kusema, mzee wa zama za uwazi, ukweli, na uwajibikaji. This person is His Excellency, late Benjamin William Mkapa. This day has brought us to value his efforts to improve the performance of health sector in Tanzania. Your Excellence, many issues I planned to share have already been spoken by the previous speakers. And because of limited time, my message will be signed and delivered online. With your permission, Your Excellence, I take this opportunity to welcome Dr. Hussein Mwinyi to deliver his remarks, the President of Zanzibar, to deliver his remarks, and later 
welcome you to address this audience. Your Excellency, President of United Republic of Tanzania, thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to say this a few words to this audience. Thank you. Mheshimiwa Samia Suluhu Hassan Rais wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania kwanza naomba mniruhusu nitoe hotuba yangu kwa Kiswahili Mheshimiwa Rais wa Staff wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania na Wazanzibar Mheshimiwa Mzee Mwinyi Mzee Kikwete na mzee Karume Waheshimiwa makamu wa kwanza na makamu wa pili wa Rais wa Zanzibar Mama Ana Mkapa mjane wa mpendwa wetu Hayati Rais Benjamin William Mkapa Waheshimiwa mawaziri mliopo wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania na wale wa Zanzibar Mwenyekiti wa bodi ya taasisi ya Benjamin William Mkapa Dr. Kimambo Mtendaji mkuu wa taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa Dr. Ellen Mkondi Asinkoro Jumuiya ya wanadiplomasia washiriki kutoka sekta binafsi na asasi zisizo za kiserikali mwenyekiti na wajumbe wa bodi ya taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa familia na marafiki mabibi na mabwana Ninayo furaha kujumuika nanyi asubuhi ya leo katika maadhimisho haya ya safari ya maisha na urithi wa mpendwa wetu Hayati Benjamin William Mkapa Rais mstaafu na mwanzilishi wa taasisi ya Benjamin William Mkapa Na kushukuru mwenyekiti wa bodi ya wadhamini kwa kunialika kwenye shughuli hii muhimu Awali ya awali ya yote ni kupongeze wewe na bodi unayoiongoza kwa kuazimia kuadhimisha kumbukumbu hii mwaka huu na miaka ijayo. Pili ni wapongeze kwa maandalizi mazuri ya maadhimisho haya ambayo hapana shaka yamefana sana. Binafsi nimefurahishwa sana na namna maadhimisho haya yalivyoratibiwa. Nimesikiliza shuhuda zilizotolewa na jopo la wataalamu lililojadili lilo ajenda muhimu ya afya kwa wote itapendeza miaka ijayo kufanya maadhimisho haya kule Zanzibar serikali yangu itawapa kila aina serikali yangu itawapa kila aina ya ushirikiano mtakao hitaji wa viongozi mabibi na mabwana Nilipopokea mwaliko huu siku sita hata kidogo kuukubali na nikalazimika kuahirisha shughuli nyingine ili niweze kuepo hapa leo. Nilifanya hivyo kwa sababu mbili kubwa. Kwanza hayati rais mstaafu Benjamin Mkapa kwangu mimi alikuwa ni zaidi ya kiongozi. Alikuwa ni rais wangu na alinipa fursa ya kuhudumu katika serikali yake kwa nafasi ya naibu waziri kwa miaka mitano. Alikuwa ndio rais wa kwanza aliyefungua safari yangu ya kisiasa pale aliponiteua kuwa naibu waziri mwaka elfu mbili. Aliwekeza kwangu imani kubwa na alibeba dha, alibeba dhamana kubwa sana. Kuniteua mimi wakati huo nikiwa kijana na mgeni kabisa kwenye siasa nikitokea katika taaluma ya udaktari kupitia mikono yake ya ulezi alinilea nikakuwa kufika hapa nilipo leo 
nasikitika tu kuwa aliondoka kabla ya kushuhudia nikiapishwa kuwa rais wa Zanzibar sina shaka angejivunia sana kuona matunda ya kazi ya ulezi wake hayati rais mkapa kwangu pia alikuwa ni baba naye alinichukulia kama mwanawe wakati wote alimpatia fursa ya kumuona na kuvuna hekima na busara zake akiwa madarakani na hata baada ya kustafu kwa kweli nilifaidika naye sana kwake nimejifunza uongozi nimejifunza kuhudumu na nimejifunza nidhamu ya kazi daima nilimjua kama kiongozi mwenye maono hofu ya Mungu na mwanazuoni nafurahia sana mazungumzo yangu naye na daima niliagana naye nikiwa nimechota busara kutoka kwake pili mimi ni mmoja wa wadau wa taasisi ya Benjamin William Mkapa nilipata fursa ya kuhudumu katika taasisi hii kwa nafasi ya mwenyekiti wa kwanza wa bodi ya wadhamini nilipoteuliwa na hayati mzee Mkapa mwaka 2006 na, na hapa ni seme ni sahihi kwamba kama alivyosema rais mstaafu Kikwete kwamba wakati bodi hii au taasisi hii inasajiliwa ni kweli nilikuwa waziri wa nchi katika ofisi ya makamu wa rais ninaishughulikia muungano lakini jukumu hili nilipewa kabla kidogo kabla ya kusajiliwa ambapo kulikuwa kuna programs zilizoanza mwaka 2005 nikiwa naibu waziri wa afya Uteuzi ule unathibitisha kile nilichokisema awali kuwa daima alinipa imani na heshima kubwa sana. Nami na niliamini sana katika maono, nia na azma yake ya kutaka kuona kila mtanzania popote alipo na katika hali yoyote ya kiuchumi alionayo anapata huduma bora ya afya bila kizuizi. Alituhamasisha kuhakikisha kuwa tunabuni mipango mbinu na mikakati yenye kutafuta ufumbuzi juu ya changamoto zinazozuia huduma bora za afya kuwafikia wahitaji huko waliko zikiwemo ukosefu wa nyumba za watumishi na ukosefu wa watumishi wa kada mbalimbali mbali za afya na furahi kuwa nilitimiza wajibu wangu huo ipasavyo na najivunia na, na fursa ile ninapoona taasisi hii imefikisha miaka 15 Ninafarajika na kujivunia kuwa sehemu ya mafanikio yake ambayo yameelezewa kwa kina mapema leo. Mheshimiwa Rais, ndugu viongozi, mabibi na mabwana. Hayati mimi Mheshimiwa Rais Benjamin William Mkapa ameifanyia nchi yetu mambo makubwa. Mageuzi ya kiuchumi na ya soko aliyoyaongoza yamekuwa na mchango mkubwa kwa Zanzibar yalisaidia sana kuifungua Zanzibar kutoka katika ukiritimba wa uchumi wa karafu yani clove monoculture nia yake njema na kujali kwake kulichangia sana kupatikana kwa mwafaka wa kwanza wa kisiasa Zanzibar ambao ulirejesha hali ya amani na utulivu mwafaka ule ulisaidia sana kutuliza joto la kisiasa Zanzibar na kufungua fursa za majadiliano na mashirikiano ya kisiasa visiwani kwetu. Msimamo wake juu ya muungano ulikuwa thabit, usioyumba na alikuwa tayari kusimamia na kuulinda muungano wetu kwa kauli na vitendo. Zanzibar pia ni mnufaikaji mkubwa wa miradi ya taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa tokea mwaka 2007. Miradi hiyo imejikita katika sekta ya afya hususan kujenga uwezo wa watumishi wa afya katika kutoa huduma zinazohusu ukimwi, kifua kikuu, malaria na afya ya mama na mtoto. Tunajivunia mafanikio yaliyopatikana kupitia miradi hii ambayo kwa kweli imesaidia sana juhudi za serikali ya mapinduzi ya Zanzibar kutimiza wajibu wake wa kuhakikisha utoaji wa huduma bora za afya kwa wote. Napata faraja kuwa mazungumzo ya mashirikiano kati ya serikali na nayoyongoza na taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa yako katika hatua nzuri. Ni matumaini yetu kuwa yakikamilika yatasaidia sana kufanikisha azma yetu 
ya kupunguza uhaba wa watumishi wa sekta ya afya pamoja na upatikanaji wa fedha za kuwezesha lengo la serikali ninayoiongoza kumpatia bima ya afya kila mzanzibari na wahakikishia ushirikiano wangu na wenzangu wote serikalini kufanikisha azma hii Nimeguswa pia na uamuzi wenu wa kuanzisha mfuko wa wakfu wa Benjamin Mkapa kwa ajili ya kuendeleza kazi zake kupitia taasisi yenu. Ni wazo sahihi kwa wakati sahihi. Wakfu hii ikifanikiwa itasaidia sana kupunguza utegemezi wa misaada na kujenga uwezo wa taasisi kujitegemea. Daima kujitegemea ndio ilikuwa na adhiri ya hayati Rais Mkapa. Mheshimiwa Rais Mabibi na mabwana. Sisi Zanzibar tunatekeleza dira ya maendeleo ya 2050 ambayo inalenga kuifikisha Zanzibar kwa nchi ya uchumi wa kati wa juu, yani upper middle income status ifikapo mwaka 2050. Dira hiyo imejengwa kwenye nguzo nne ambazo ni mapinduzi ya kiuchumi, rasilimali watu na huduma za jamii, utawala bora na uhimilivu na miundo mbinu. Kuhusu rasilimali waati na, na huduma za jamii tumedhamiria kujenga jamii ya watu wenye afya bora wenye kuweza kushindana na wengine duniani wabunifu na wachapakazi ili waweze kuchangia kikamilifu katika uchumi wa nchi ili kufikia lengo hilo hatuna budi kuhakikisha kuwepo kwa huduma za jamii zilizo bora za uhakika na zenye kutumainika ni katika muktadha huu Tunawakaribisha sana taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa kushirikiana kujenga mifumo ya kuwezesha upatikanaji wa huduma bora za afya ambazo zinafikiwa na wote zinazotolewa na watoa huduma wenye sifa na zinazoendana na teknolojia ya kisasa. Tungependa kuona kila mlichofanya huku bara hususan katika ujenzi wa mifumo ya afya kinafanyika pia Zanzibar. Mheshimiwa Rais, mabibi na mabwana, naomba nimalizie hotuba yangu kwa mara nyingine tena kuushukuru uongozi wa taasisi ya Benjamin William Mkapa kwa heshima hii kubwa walionitunukia ya kuzungumza kwenye hadhara hii. Baada ya maneno hayo, sasa naomba nifanye kazi niliyopewa ya kumkaribisha Mheshimiwa Rais kuzungumza na hadhara hii. Mheshimiwa Rais, karibu sana. Mheshimiwa Dr. Hussein Mwinyi, Rais wa Zanzibar na mwenyekiti wa baraza la mapinduzi, Mheshimiwa Marais wa Staafu wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania na Marais wa Staafu wa Zanzibar, Mheshimiwa viongozi wa vyama vya siasa na hapa naomba nitambue uwepo wa viongozi wa chama cha mapinduzi. Waheshimiwa marais wengine wa staafu, marafiki wa hayati rais staafu Benjamin Mkapa ambao wamejiunga nasi kwa njia ya mtandao. Mama Ana Mkapa a, familia marafiki pamoja na kina mama wake wa viongozi ndio kuja kumunga mkono mama Mkapa. Mheshimiwa mawaziri mliopo wenyeji wetu Mheshimiwa Amos Makala kuwa mkoa wa Dar es Salaam Mheshimiwa mabalozi na wakilishi wa taasisi za kimataifa mliopo Dr. Adelina Kimambo mwenyekiti wa bodi ya wadhamini ya taasisi ya Benjamin William Mkapa Dr. Ellen Mkondi ya Senkoro afisa mtendaji mkuu wa taasisi ya Benjamin William Mkapa viongozi wengine wa serikali mliopo um, viongozi wa sasi mbalimbali za kiraia wageni walikuwa wana habari mabibi na mabwana 
na wasalimu kwa jina la Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania. Uh, waheshimiwa siku zote na kuwa vigumu sana kuzungumza mwisho. Na hasa baada ya wazee wote hawa kuzungumza. Ni mwasikiliza kwa makini wale wote waliofanya kazi na kumfahamu kwa karibu zaidi mheshimiwa hayati rais mstaafu mzee mkapa ni watu wenye kumfahamu na wamefanya naye kazi kwa karibu zaidi kwa hiyo wamezungumza yote kuhusu mzee mkapa kwa kifupi wamemwelezea mzee mkapa kama kiongozi aliyekuwa na maono makubwa jasiri shupavu imara mpenda maendeleo mwanadiplomasia nguli mwenye kutaka kuona matokeo na mtetezi walionyimwa haki na kubaliana na hayo yote mimi pia nimebahatika kumfahamu hayati rais mkapa naweza kuthibitisha kuwa yote aliyosemwa na walionitangulia kuzungumza ni ya kweli mzee mkapa alikuwa mtu wa kipekee sana mara zote ilikuwa ukipata fursa ya kukutana naye na kuzungumza naye utaondoka ukiwa umevuna mambo mengi hakuwa mchoyo wa, ma, wa taarifa wala kukupa maarifa alikuwa mtu mwenye haiba ya mamlaka na kujiamini alikuwa mwenye ufahamu mkubwa na busara nyingi na hivyo na hayo yote amejidhihirisha kwenye ustadi wa maandiko yake mengi kwa hakika yaliyoelezwa hapa yanathibitisha umuhimu wa kuandaliwa kwa kongamano hili hivyo basi naishukuru na kuipongeza sana taasisi ya Benjamin William Mkapa kwa maandalizi mazuri ya kongamano hili na kwa kunialika pia kabla ya kuingia ukumbini nilipata fursa kuzunguka na kuona kidogo kazi zinazofanywa na taasisi hii na ni kweli kazi kubwa imefanyika chini ya uongozi wa afisa mtendaji mkuu Ellen Sinkoro na mwenyekiti wa bodi Dr. Adelina Kimambo kwa bahati nzuri wote ni wanawake na kama tunavyojua chini ya uongozi wa wanawake akiharibiki kitu Waheshimiwa viongozi, mabibi na mabwana. Nina uhakika nitakuwa sijaongeza chumvi nikisema kitabu cha historia taifa letu hakiwezi kukamilika bila kuwepo sura nzima itakayomweleza hayati rais Benjamin William Mkapa. Na hii sio tu kwa sababu alikuwa rais wetu wa awamu ya tatu. Lakini pia kutokana na mageuzi makubwa aliyofanyia nchi yetu sote tunafahamu jinsi ambavyo wakati wa uongozi wake mzee Mkapa alisimamia mageuzi makubwa ya kiuchumi nchini miongoni mwa hatua kubwa alizochukua ni kutoa fursa kubwa zaidi kwa sekta binafsi na kukaribisha uwekezaji kutoka nje hatua hizi zilisaidia kuongeza mapato ya serikali toka shilingi bilioni 331.2 mwaka 1995 hadi kufikia shilingi trilioni mbili mwaka 2005. Aidha mzee Mkapa alifanikiwa kupunguza deni la taifa kama ilivyosemwa hapa karibu kwa nusu kutoka asilimia 143.7 tokuwa tukidaiwa ya pato la taifa mwaka 95 hadi asilimia 60.7 mwaka 2005. Na hii iliwezekana baada ya mzee Mkapa kwa kutumia uzoefu wake wa diplomasia kuzishawishi taasisi za kifedha za kimataifa na nchi wa hisani kusamehe madeni waliokuwa wanatudai kupitia mpango wa HIPIC uliosimamiwa na Benki ya Dunia na shika la fedha la IMF. Hii pia ilisaidia nchi wa hisani na taasisi za kifedha za kimataifa kurejesha uhusiano na nchi yetu au imani kurejesha imani na nchi yetu na hivyo kuanza tena kutupatia mikopo na misaada. Vile vile mzee Mkapa ataendelea kukumbukwa kwa kujenga mifumo imara ya kitaasisi ya serikali 
na wote tumesikia hapa kutoka kwa balozi sefue lakini pia kutoka kwa rais mstaafu uh, kaka yetu Kikwete mambo ambayo ameyafanya na kwa ufupi ni kwamba alianzisha taasisi nyingi wale waliokuepo wakati wote tunakumbuka slogani yake ya kodi kwanza na kwenye mikutano tulikuwa tunaitana halo 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 ya mkapa kodi kwanza na kwa maana hiyo alianzisha TRA lakini pia PCCB taasisi ya kupambana na rushwa lakini pia kama ilivyosemwa TASAF Turn Roads uh, baraza la taifa la uwezeshaji TNBC baraza la biashara la taifa mkurabita uh, shirika la bima au mfuko wa taifa wa bima ya afya tume kupambana na ukimwi na mengi taasisi nyingi ambazo wengine walizitaja hapa taasisi hizi zipo mpaka leo na zinaendelea kutoa huduma na kuchochea ukuaji wa uchumi wa nchi yetu ni hakika ni katika kipindi chake mzee mkapa ndipo mkakati wa kukuza uchumi na kupambana na umaskini mkukuta sera mpya mambo ya nje pamoja na dira ya taifa ya maendeleo ya mwaka 2020 mpaka 25 ilipitishwa hii inaonesha kuwa mbali na kuangalia matatizo ya wakati huo mzee mkapa alikuwa pia na maono ya kuangalia mustakbali wa nchi yetu kwa nyakati za mbele zaidi Washima viongozi, mabibi na mabwana. Mchango wa mzee Mkapa haukuishia kwenye mipaka ya nchi yetu, bali pia nje ya Tanzania. Alishiriki kamilifu katika kuifufua jumu ya Afrika Mashariki, akichukua kijiti kutoka kwa mzee Mwinyi, mzee Ruksa. Aidha alitoa mchango wake wakati wa kugeuza iliyokuwa uh, umoja wa nchi huru za Afrika. OAU na kuwa umoja wa Afrika AU mwaka 2001 na halikadhalika kwenye mchakato wa kutafuta amani ya Burundi uliopelekea kusainiwa kwa mkataba wa amani na maridhiano wa Burundi kwa mwaka 2000 Zaidi ya hapo mzee Mkapa alitoa mchango mkuu kwenye ujenzi wa ofisi za makao makuu ya jumuiya ya maendeleo kusini mwa Afrika SADC pale Gaberon nchini Botswana wakati akikabidhi mwenyekiti wa SADC mwaka 2004 baada ya kuona wafadhili wanasuasua mzee Mkapa alitoa wito na wazo kwa nchi wanachama kutoa michango kuanza ujenzi wa ofisi hiyo naye aliahidi na alitangaza kwamba Tanzania itachangia dola laki tano katika mchango huo wakuwa nchi nyingine za SADC baada kuona umadhubuti wa mzee Mkapa waliunga mkono wazo hilo na michango iliendelea Washimu wa viongozi mabibi na mabwana sambamba na hayo sifa nyingine kubwa ya mzee Mkapa ni uwezo wake mkubwa wa kuhimili au kutoogopa mijadala ya kimataifa na hapa kuna mifano mingi sote tunakumbuka mwaka miaka ya moja mia tisa tisini na mwanzoni wa miaka elfu mbili kulikuwa na vuguvugu kubwa la kupinga masuala ya utandawazi au globalization na baadhi ya watu wakiwemo baadhi ya viongozi walitumia fursa hiyo kujipatia umaarufu mzee mkapa yeye akafua hakufuata mkumbo badala yake alijitokeza hadharani kutetea utandawazi na kueleza kwa nini tunapaswa kuupokea na katika hili alifanya kazi kubwa mbili. Moja, kuelimisha wananchi kuhusu umuhimu wa utandawazi ndani ya nchi yake. Na pili, kutumia uzoefu wake wa kidiplomasia kuieleza dunia kuhusu umuhifu, umuhimu wa kuwa na utandawazi unaojali maslahi ya makundi. Hii ndio iliyopelekea mzee Mkapa kateuliwa kwa mwenyekiti mwenza wa tume iliyounda shirika la iliyoundwa na shirika la kazi duniani ya kushughulikia masuala ya utandawazi akishirikiana na mheshimiwa Taja Halonen aliyekuwa rais wa Finland aidha kama ilivyoelezwa mapema hapa au tulivyomsikia mheshimiwa Tony Blair waziri mkuu wa zamani wa Uingereza alikuwa mwenyekiti mwenza na mzee Mkapa kwenye kamisheni 
kuhusu masuala ya Afrika. Zaidi ya hapo, Mzee Mkapa alikuwa mwenyekiti wa kamisheni ya kushughulikia masuala ya nchi zinazoendelea, yani South Commission. Kupitia ushiriki wa Mzee Mkapa kwenye vyombo hivyo, sauti ya Afrika au sauti ya nchi za Afrika na nchi zinazoendelea iliweza kusikika kwa sababu sauti yake ilikuwa nzito. Niseme pia kwamba mimi binafsi pia nimewahi kushuhudia uwezo wa mzee Mkapa kwenye masuala ya kimataifa. Kama tunavyokumbuka mwaka na moja, baada kutokea machafuko kule Zanzibar chini ya uongozi wakati ule Zanzibar ikiongozwa na mheshimiwa Rais Amana Bedi Karume Mzee Mkapa aliamua kuunda jopo la Watanzania ambao aliwatuma nje ya nchi. Jopo lile lilikuwa na mheshimiwa Jakaya Mrisho Kikwete wakati ule akiwa waziri wa mambo ya nje wa Tanzania. Mheshimiwa Ali Mohamed Shein akiwa waziri wa sheria na utawala bora serikali ya mapinduzi Zanzibar. Lakini nikiwemo na mimi nikiwa waziri wa kazi ajira za vijana maendeleo ya wanawake na watoto pamoja na wenzetu kadhaa kina brigedia Mwakanjuki na alitupa kazi ya kwenda nchi mbalimbali duniani kuelezea yaliyotokea lakini pia kuelezea tulivyojipanga kwenda mbele na kuondoa uh, tatizo lililojitokeza katika kuifanya kazi hiyo nilijifunza mambo mengi ya siasa na diplomasia pamoja na hekima ambayo wakuu wa nchi wanapaswa kutumia kunapotokea changamoto hasa za kisiasa. Hatua hiyo ndiyo iliyoleta mwafaka wa kisiasa Zanzibar na nchi kwa ujumla kuendelea na shughuli zake bila vikwazo vya ndani wala nje vya kimataifa. Kwa tulijifunza mengi kutokana na mzee Mkapa. Na asingefanya hivi hatujui tu kwa tunaelekea wapi. Waheshimiwa viongozi mabibi na mabwana baada kustaafu wengi tulidhani mzee Mkapa angepumzika lakini haikuwa hivyo aliendelea kujishughulisha na masuala mbalimbali ya kikanda barani Afrika na kwenye mataifa mengine ulimwenguni sote tunakumbuka wakati mauti yanamkuta mzee Mkapa alikuwa msuluhishi wa mgogoro nchini Burundi na mwenyekiti wa jukwaa la viongozi wa Afrika kama ilivyosemwa hapo awali Nimefurahi kuona kwa viongozi wenzake au wenziwe wa jukwaa hilo akiwemo rais mstaafu Lusegeno Basanjo wanafuatilia kongamano hili kwa njia ya mtandao. Ndani ya nchi rais Mkapa aliendelea kutoa mchango wake kupitia taasisi aliyoianzisha. Taasisi hii inatoa mchango mkubwa kwa nchi yetu hususan katika sekta ya afya kama ilivyoelezwa na wengi hapa ndugu zangu kwenye kitabu cha wasifu wake mzee mkapa amekiri kwa wazo la kuanzisha taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa alilipata kutoka kwa rais mstaafu wa Marekani mheshimiwa Bill Clinton hivyo basi mnaruhusu kutumia jukwaa hili kumshukuru na kumpongeza sana rais mstaafu Clinton kwa kumshawishi hati mzee mkapa kutekeleza wazo hilo Nina taarifa kwamba <coughs> Nina taarifa kwamba Mheshimiwa Clinton naye lakini wote tumeona kwamba naye anashiriki kongamano hili kwa kupitia njia ya mtandao na kwa niaba yenu ni mshukuru sana sana. Aidha kwa namna ya pekee na shukuru na kuwapongeza wadau na wahisani wote ambao wamekuwa wakiunga mkono kazi zinazofanywa na taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa kwa kutoa kiasi cha shilingi bilioni nane hadi kufikia mwezi Juni 2021 na hawasihi sana muendelee kuyunga mkono taasisi hii na katika hilo nitumie fursa hii kuipongeza sana taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa kwa kubuni wazo la kuanzisha mfuko wa uwekezaji lakini nimepata jina zuri kutoka kwa mdogo wangu Uh, Dr. Hussein Ali Mwinyi mfuko wa wakfu. Hili ni wazo zuri 
ambalo sio tu litatoa uhakika wa taasisi kuendelea na kazi zake bali pia linaendelea na msimamo wa mzee Mkapa kuhusu umuhimu wa kujitegemea. Kwa msingi huo serikali inaunga mkono kuanzishwa kwa mfuko huu na ni ahadi yangu kwamba serikali itachangia. Na wasihi wadau wengine nao kuchangia ili kuukuza mfuko huu. Waheshimiwa viongozi, mabibi na mabwana, muda mfupi uliopita umefanyika mdahalo wenye kauli mbiu, huduma za afya kwa wote, urithi wa Rais Benjamin William Mkapa katika kujenga mifumo imara ya sekta ya afya. Mjadala huu ni mwafaka na umefanyika kipindi sahihi. Hati Rais Mkapa alikuwa mumuni mzuri wa masuala ya afya kwa wote. Kwa upande mwingine kama mnavyofahamu hivi sasa serikali pia ipo kwenye mchakato wa mfumo wa kutoa huduma za afya kwa wote kupitia bima ya afya kwa wote. Na kwa sababu hiyo nimefurahishwa sana na majadiliano yaliyofanyika hapa. Nina uhakika uh, wataalamu na serikali tutakapo yafanyia kazi yale yaliyozungumzwa hapa yatasaidia sio tu katika kurahisisha kufikia utoaji wa huduma za afya kwa wote lakini pia kuboresha upatikanaji wa huduma za afya nchini na hapa nataka niwe mkweli binafsi natamani na kwa hakika nitafurahi sana endapo majadiliano yaliyofanyika yatatuwezesha kuboresha huduma za afya ya uzazi na afya ya mtoto kwa kuwa Maswala haya ni ajenda ya moyo wangu. Sambamba na hayo, naamini majadiliano yaliyofanyika yatatuwezesha kukabiliana na changamoto nyingine za afya zinazokabili nchi yetu na dunia kwa ujumla ikiwemo mlipuko wa ugonjwa wa uviko 19 au COVID-19. Kuhusu janga hili la uviko 19 Serikali inaendelea kumtaka kila mwananchi kuchukua tahadhari za kujikinga na ugonjwa kwa kufuata maelekezo ya wataalamu wetu wa afya kwa kuwa kinga ni bora kuliko afya kuliko tiba samahani na kwa upande mwingine serikali tunaendelea kuchukua hatua mbalimbali za kukabiliana na ugonjwa huu ambapo kwa sasa tunakamilisha taratibu za kuagiza chanjo kwa ajili ya kinga Mwelekeo ni kwamba Mwelekeo ni kwamba kila atakayehitaji huduma ya chanjo iwe inapatikana. Na kama nilivyosema kabla, kwa chanjo hiyo ni ya hiari. Hivyo basi napenda kutumia fursa hii kuomba wadau wa afya kuunga mkono jitihada hizo za serikali. Washimu wa viongozi mabibi na mabwana, nimehakikishiwa kuwa kongamano hili litakuwa linafanywa au linafanyika kila mwaka kwa sababu hiyo haitakuwa vyema kumaliza kueleza yote yanayomhusu mzee Mkapa leo hii hasa kwa kuwa mzee huyu tulimfahamu kama kiongozi wa serikali lakini vile vile kiongozi wa kisiasa tuna mengi ambayo tungeweza kumuelezea wengi wamesimama kumuelezea lakini Ukiangalia maelezo yao yanayokutana ni machache kuliko yale ambayo hayakutani. Kwa mzee huyu ana wigo mpana wa kuelezwa mambo aliyoyafanya katika dunia hii. Hivyo kwa leo ningependa niishie hapa. Hata hivyo kabla sijaitimisha napenda kurudia kuishukuru taasisi ya Benjamin William Mkapa kwa kuandaa kongamano hili la kumbukizi ya maisha ya hati rais mstafu Benjamin Mkapa nataka ni wahakikishie kuwa serikali itaendeleza ushirikiano uliopo ikiwemo katika kutekeleza mpango mkakati wa taasisi hiyo watano wa afya unayotekelezwa katika kipindi cha miaka mitano ijayo ambao mmezindua hivi karibuni kwa bahati nzuri yote aliyomo kwenye mpango mkakati wenu 
yamo pia kwenye mpango wetu wa miaka mpango wetu wa tatu wa taifa wa maendeleo wa miaka mitano wa mwaka 2021 hadi 2025-26 Kwa mama yetu Ana Mkapa pamoja na familia nataka ni wahakikishie kwa serikali ipo na itakuwa pamoja nanyi kwa kila hali na hapa nataka niwape taarifa ndugu zangu wa shirika wa kongamano hili kwamba mbali ya mimi kumfahamu mzee Mkapa lakini nimebahatika pia kulelewa na wote mzee Mkapa na mama Mkapa mzee Mkapa nilisafiri naye mara nyingi nikiwa waziri wa kazi vijana maendeleo yake na watoto katika mikutano ya kimataifa na mara nyingi alipenda nisafiri naye kwenye ndege yake wakati wa safari alinifunza mengi sana lakini kwa upande wa pili mama mkapa mimi nilikuwa mjumbe wa bodi ya taasisi ya mama mkapa ya fursa sawa kwa wote au IOTF <tos> nilifanya naye kazi kwa miaka minne 1996 hadi 2000 lakini ilikuwa ni mama mkapa na wajumbe wenzangu wa bodi walionishawishi sana kuingia kwenye shughuli za kisiasa hivyo mwaka elfu mbili nikamuacha kwenye taasisi nami nikaingia shughuli za kisiasa kwa hiyo namshukuru sana mama mkapa dr Huseni hapa alisema alivyo leo ni matunda ya mzee mkapa kwa nilivyo mimi leo ni matunda ya wengi sana lakini pamoja na mzee mkapa na mama mkapa kwa marafiki zetu na wahisani na wadau wetu wa maendeleo na wasihi muendelee kushirikiana nasi na kuiunga mkono taasisi ya Benjamin William Mkapa ili iendelee kuwahudumia mamilioni ya watanzania nimefurahi na kupata moyo kuona waheshimiwa mabalozi pamoja na wawakilishi wa mashirika ya kimataifa wako hapa pamoja nasi wakishirikiana na taasisi hii hii ni kuonesha jinsi mnavyothamini taasisi hii ya Benjamin Mkapa. Waheshimiwa mabibi na mabwana, napenda nihitimishe sasa hotuba yangu kwa kutumia maneno ya aliyekuwa kiongozi wa India Mahatma Gandhi ambaye aliwahi kusema na nanuku, Great men never die and it is up to us to keep them immortal by continuing the work they have commenced akimaanisha kuwa watu wa viongozi mahiri huwa hawafi na ni juu yetu kuwa huisha au kuwafanya waendelee kuishi kwa kuendeleza kazi walizozianzisha kwa hiyo niwasihi ndugu zangu twende kuendeleza mambo mazuri yaliyoanzishwa na mzee wetu Benjamin William Mkapa serikali huwa tuna ahadi yetu ya kuyatunza na kuyaendeleza mema yote yaliyofanywa na viongozi wa awamu zote zilizotangulia na kuleta mema mapya. Na katika hilo tunatambua kuwa viatu vyao ni vikubwa sana. Si rahisi sisi wa leo kuvivaa lakini tutajitahidi. Naomba niwaage tena kwa jina la Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania. Asanteni sana kwa kunisikiliza. Your Excellency, thank you very much. And if it pleases you, Your Excellency, we are requesting you now to cut the ribbon to launch the endowment fund. Uh, if Your Excellency could go to the podium and the chairperson of the board to cut the ribbon. And Your Excellency, I will request once you launch, yes, to please hand over one copy to Mama Mkapa and one copy to President Mwini. Yes.
Excellence, please, if you can give one copy to Mama Mkapa and one copy to President Mwini. Chairman of the board, if you can take a few copies and over to the VIP who are on the front seat, one copy each, please. One copy for our leaders. Thank you very much. If the CEO and uh, chairperson, you can please give one copy to leaders on the front row as, as quickly as possible. We are getting to an end of the program. If you can please provide one copy from uh, Hanarabu Mangula up to Hanarabu Sefue, that will do. Yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, one copy each. I now call upon one member of the board of Benjamin Mkapa Foundation, Lawrence Mafuru, to come forward for presentation of award to the family of late Mkapa, and we will request your excellency to give this award to Mama Anna Mkapa. So I'm requesting a person responsible for that award to come forward, and if it pleases you, your excellency, to stand up and be able to hand over this award to Mama Anna Mkapa in the remembrance of our President Mkapa. Yes, Mafuru. Yes, Chairman of, yes, member of the board with Mama Anna Mkapa, yes. could please hand it over to Her Excellency, then you hand over to Mama Mkapa. Microphone. Um, um, could you provide him with uh, uh, one wireless microphone quickly? Um, okay. um, in the interest of time, if we can do quickly, yes, the microphone is, is here. Quickly. Yes. Your Excellence, uh, Madam Samia Sulu Hassan, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. Your Excellence, uh, Dr. Hussein Ali Mwinyi, President of Zanzibar. Uh, Your Excellency, former presidents and uh, all leaders, protocols of the observed. We are gathered here today to commemorate the life of one of the great Tanzanians for a job well done. His unbridled enthusiasm has touched many lives of men and women in our ranks for the better. For his service to us, there were no rewards demanded, nor were any ever given. He was content with making advances in the field of health through is the foundation and spiritual fulfillment that comes from the love of your fellow man. It is people like Kinze Mkapa who have taught us the real meaning of leaving a legacy behind. Benjamin Mkapa Foundation maintains its settler's dream and continue to build upon foundations he created. In his voice, he said, I will leave it to my God and you to decide what difference I have made in this world. And since he's left us to us, the board, management, and staff of BMF have decided the difference he, ma he made were massive and very demonstrable. In recognition of that, his visionary leadership, love for his country, and in appreciation of an outstanding diplomat, a reformist, a respectful civil servant, great politician, an exceptional orator and a writer. I would like to call upon Mama Mkapa so that she can get this reward as an appreciation of that great journey that Mze traveled. And I'd like to hand over that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
On behalf of the family of late uh, Benjamin Mkapa, I now call upon William Wereo to give a vote of thanks to Madam President. William Wereo, please take the stage. Thank you very much. Mheshimiwa Samia Sulu Hassan Rais wa Jamhuri ya Muungano wa Tanzania Mheshimiwa Dr Hussein Ali Mwinyi Rais wa Zanzibar na mwenyekiti wa Baraza la Mapinduzi Mheshimiwa viongozi wetu wa kitaifa wa sasa na wastaafu mlioko hapa ndugu wa shiriki wenzangu katika kongamano hili mabibi na maobana nimesimama hapa kwa niaba ya familia ya Rais Mstaafu Mzee Mkapa pamoja na mama Ana kutoa shukrani zetu za dhati. Tunakushukuru sana Mheshimiwa Rais kwa kutenga muda wako na kuja kushiriki nasi katika kongamano hili. Tunajua una majukumu mengi lakini umeweza kuja kushiriki nasi ni jambo ambalo limetufariji sana tunasema asante sana. Tunakushukuru pia kwa pledge uliyoitoa ya kuchangia katika mfuko wa wakfu lakini tunakushukuru zaidi kwa ombi lililotoa kwa washiriki kwamba nao washiriki katika kuchangia. Waswahili wanasema ombi la mkubwa ni amri. Naamini Mheshimiwa Rais amri yako imesikika na itafanyiwa kazi. Tunakushukuru pia kwa kueleza ahadi uliyoitoa kwa niaba ya eh, eh, Foundation ya Benjamin Mkapa kwamba serikali yako ya awamu ya sita itafanya kazi kwa karibu na taasisi kuhakikisha kuwa mpango mkakati wa miaka mitano wa taasisi unafanikiwa. Kwa Mheshimiwa Rais Mwinyi tunakushukuru sana nawe. Tunakushukuru kwa sababu juhudi zako ndio zimewezesha mwaka huu taasisi ya Benjamin Mkapa ikafikisha miaka 15 ya uwepo wake. Wewe ndio ulianza nayo, ulijenga msingi, ulikuwa msingi mzuri na matunda yake tunayaona sasa. Lakini vile vile tunakushukuru kwa sababu umeahidi kufanya kazi kwa karibu na taasisi hii. Lakini pia ukatoa ahadi kwamba uko tayari kuhosti kikao kijacho au shughuli ijayo ya kampuni hii kama itaamuliwa ifanyike Zanzibar. Nina hakika ombi hilo litakubaliwa na bila shaka shughuli inayofuata itafanyika Zanzibar. Umepongeza pia kuanzishwa kwa mfuko wa wakfu. Ingawa kusema chochote naamini baada ya Rais Samia kusema na wewe utaamua kuchangia mfuko huo kwa kadri utakavyoona inafaa. Mheshimiwa Rais Kikwete tunakushukuru kwa maneno mazuri uliyosema kwa mzee wetu wewe pamoja na Rais Clinton tumemsikia pamoja na Waziri Mkuu Tony Blair pamoja na Rais Obasanjo mmemweleza mzee wetu vizuri sana. Lakini tumefarijika kwamba pamoja na kwamba ni mwaka mmoja sasa tangu kufariki kwake mmeendelea kuwa karibu na hata kuamua kwenu kushiriki katika simposium hii wewe kwa kushiriki binafsi na wenzio kwa kushiriki kwa njia ya mtandao mnaonyesha ni kwa namna gani mlika vizuri na mzee wetu na ndio maana tumeendelea kuwa pamoja Mheshimiwa Rais tunawashukuru wafadhili na wote waliofanikisha kufanyika kwa shughuli hii ya leo tunaamini imefanyika kwa namna ambayo kweli hata mzee angekuwa hai angeridhishwa na jinsi ilivyoandaliwa na kufanyika Tunawashukuru marafiki na ndugu wote ambao umekuja kushiriki nasi. Wengine wamesafiri kutoka maeneo ya mbali kuja kushiriki kwenye shughuli hii. Hii yote imetutia moyo kwamba mwaka mmoja baadaye bado alama alizoziacha mzee wetu katika taifa letu zinaendelea kuthaminiwa. Tukushukuru pia zaidi Mheshimiwa Rais kwa kukubali hata kutoa tuzo ambayo amekabidhiwa kwa namna ya picha. Nadhani nyote ni mashahidi kwamba kwa muda wa kipindi sasa nadhani takriban miezi minne tangu Mheshimiwa Rais ameingia madarakani amaonyesha ni kwa namna gani anavyoheshimu na anavyothamini watangulizi wake. Alionyesha hivyo tarehe nane Mei wakati wa sherehe ya miaka tisina sita ya Rais Mstaafu Mzee Ali Hassan Mwinyi. Ameonyesha hivyo leo na naamini kwamba huo ndio moyo wake na tutaendelea kuona katika siku zijazo. Niwashukuru pia 
sponsors wetu makampuni ya TV na redio Azam NBC Unites UNICEF na mabenki na wengine wote walio shiriki katika kugaramia sherehe hii kufanya kwenu hivyo ndio kumewezesha kufanyika kwa shughuli hii lakini hata mmekwenda bali zaidi kwa kufanya hii shughuli ikaonekana mubashara katika television kwa maana ambayo wa Tanzania wengine wengi wameweza kuiona huko waliko kwenu nyote tunasema asanteni sana sasa waswahili wanasema kushukuru ni kuomba tena nimalizie kushukuru kwamba tunashukuru leo lakini shughuli hii itakapofanyika Zanzibar na siku zijazo na hususan katika ile endowment fund inayokuja matumaini yetu ni kwamba tutaendelea kuwa pamoja na mtaendelea kushirikiana nasi kama mlivyoshiriki leo asanteni sana kwa kunisikiliza Asante sana thank you very much we have come to an end of the symposium and our request we do two things. We will all raise as the President of United Republic of Tanzania leaves uh, the podium, but our request will remain behind as she leaves for other further announcement. I now call upon Superintendent uh, Mpepo, Brassband, Wakati Moshimi Waraisi, and Ajitaharisha Kuo Dok. Number one, to Simame, to Father. Rasband.